Okay. Oh. Hel- hello. I, the universe really didn't let, want that in the airwaves, but M just said that they're creating a will and that I'm no. in the will. You, and I yeah. need it on record. And then we realized we weren't recording and now I'm so angry. You are in the will. I, I did say you better count your stars because you might be getting just my teeth or something. I don't want so. that. That's what I want on record. I don't want that. <sighs> I don't care. I want, the, I want more the say dead one, in my... So. <laughs> My, Maybe my... it's the thing that would matter most to me to give you. What do you Your think? Teeth? <laughs> I don't. You don't know what my thoughts are or my my intentions. I actually know a hundred percent your thoughts, like ninety nine percent of the time. So I think odds are. I will say, in like in a in a pinch, just let's put this on record for for real times if something okay. were to happen. Everyone that's important in my life or like a, a regular player in my life, I would like each of you to take one of my hats. I, I thought you were going to nice. say one of your teeth. I was like, we're not doing this teeth thing. I'm And also a fingernail. Ew! So um, stop only it. Only the top ten. It's like MySpace. Oh. <laughs> so Tom from MySpace gets one of your fingernails. Lucky him. <laughs> if he wants it, he could have it. He's definitely a, a, a dead ringer for, you know, a best friend. So Well, uh Thank you for that, I guess. You're welcome. Was, so was, which of my fingernails is it going to be? Maybe the middle finger, you know? It's definitely going to be the... I just take the whole finger. I'm going to tell like, <laughs> the funeral director. That'd be like, fine. Take I'm that telling one you, off. I'm telling you from beyond the grave, if you took my whole finger, that'd be fine. Okay, great. Anyway. See, I'm telling you, we needed this on record, okay? So I'm glad I finally hit record. How are you, Christine, besides about to be so rich with fingernails? <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> um, I'm great. I'm like... I mean, by the time this comes out, this is like weeks in advance now. We're for the first time probably ever. We're like very much ahead of the game recording wise. Which and is super I'm sure fun. that was the end of that and high ride. It was good while it lasted, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so when this comes out, because the episode that just came out, I guess I was saying the baby is sideways, and I'm now getting all these great tips and tricks. But like the baby's already flipped, so I'm sort of like, oh, sorry, everybody update that's but, fun um, one day yeah. in like i don't know a month or two i'll be hearing like what other weird things people have given people from beyond the grave and <laughs> yeah like, that's right somebody's gonna be no writing sense. about your fingernails and you're gonna be like what is going on <laughs> yeah we have a short memory span um but yeah so i mean when this comes out hopefully i don't know because i'm gonna be just i'm i'm a, i'm kind of being impatient i'm i'm over it i'm 30 i'll be 37 weeks this week and i'm oh kinda, my gosh i'm kind of I'm over it, you know. Is there a chance it. that you won't even be 37 weeks pregnant? You'll just be a mom? Um, I doubt it because that's in like 24 or 48 hours that I'll be 37 weeks. Oh, so. okay. So like fingers crossed I now because I need so. you to record right now. Yeah, because so. like right now we have other things to do. We've um, already done the thing where you have contractions during yeah. the show. And like yeah. now it's it, like, old, that was fun you know. For a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not for me, maybe. Right. Um, but so did yeah, your, I did mean. Your, did they go away, by the way? Like, what's the update on that? No, they just keep happening. And uh, <gasps> the doctor's just like, well, uh, you're, f- like, fine. You're not having a baby yet. Your body's just, like, practicing. And I'm like, well, wow, Girl, cool. good for me. <laughs> you're going to have so much practice, that baby's going to just drop out of you. Like, I, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Sounds That's not That's the good. dream. I'm like, it, with all this practice, it better be fucking prepared. Oh my um, god! Wow. So. so you've just been having contractions for like a yeah, two weeks. Yeah, it's fine because I can sleep. Like I when I go to sleep, that's like fine. But it's just during the day. It's like all day long. I keep getting. Uh. Che- I mean, they've been checking me. They're like, we don't know why that's happening. So um, that's really reassuring. We're gonna realize that this is actually just like some weird <laughs> excuse to not talk to me when you try it <laughs> after the baby's born. You're like, oh, like, these oh contractions. Not another one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, girl, it's Damn. too late. But it's so effective while it does while it does last for I me. Know. You know, this is like a dream scenario. But um, anyway, so I guess when this comes out, I mean, I might, I don't know. I wrote it all down on a calendar. Obviously, I already forget. But I think by the time this comes out, like the baby will presumably be here. So oh my God. very exciting. Check my Instagram, I guess, if you're oh. curious. <laughs> I, um, I have a hunch the world will know. <laughs> the world might know, or at least like someone will hear me shouting from. Ohio and be like, uh oh. When it happens, happening? can you make an announcement on Instagram with a picture of like 
a stork with Geo's head on it. Like something <laughs> that's a, real that's funky. That's a request for the listeners, I think. Um, I don't know if I'll be in like a Photoshopping mood, but maybe. You never know. I'll, you tell me when the baby's here and I will have an invitation or a, 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 an announcement prepared. You'll have like a Fiverr account or whatever that website is where you can like pay somebody five bucks and just have when a I When I was click. doing Marvel Monday, I had to put my face on every Marvel movie poster. Yeah. So oh, like, how did you do that? I always wondered. Literally, I just drew my face. Oh, you did that just like yourself. And yeah. That yeah. was pretty impressive. I was like, wow, every week Em has a new little Thank poster you. of themselves. It was pretty Thank great. Thank you. I like to, um, I like, I like the validation on the, and that's why I drink account. And I was like, who is making these? But it was you Mwah. all along. Good for you. Mwah. Yes. So you make the, the stork is what you're saying. I'll do it. You tell me when it's, it'll be done. Oh, I'll tell you. You'll hear when. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> we'll hear your, we'll hear your labor screams from across the <laughs> Honestly, country. you might. How are you, oh. Em? You look great in your 90s uh, teen, teen character hat. Um, yes, this is me living out my youth. It feels good. And I got this hat at Spirit Halloween. So if you would like to oh, get so one yourself, cool. run on over to the 90s teen character costume. I and love that that exists. <laughs> I saw it. I saw this hat from across the way. And I was like, hey, you're coming home with me. Like, this is not a temporary costume, my friend. This is officially in the main stock pile. Yeah, little did so. they know they were creating an outfit, not a costume. Uh. <laughs> I know. I don't even care if I look a little silly. It just feels right. No, it and doesn't. Like, it looks really good. I mean, I think I'm supposed to be offended because it's like probably Gen Z is creating like, oh, look, 90s char- teen character. And I'm like, oh, ow, that's just like our existence. But it it's does still feel really fun. A, I like it's got it. A, it's got a tinge of 80s to it. It's which definitely I, on the cusp of 80s. I'm mm-hmm. not against it, but it doesn't totally feel 90s. And the cartoon character or the costume character did state it was a 90s character. So... Yeah, it does feel like it came, it's like a cartoon that came out on the cusp of like 80s, 90s. This feels like a 91. This feels like it a... It feels like a 91. That's okay. That's I'm where still the best cool things it. come from. So Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> that's nice of you to say about yourself. So, um, <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, one day your, your little baby will say that about 2021 oh, when someone's boy. trying to wear a costume from the 20s. Yeah, but and nobody's... Be like, Oh, the twenties, but nobody's going to be able to say yes. Great things happened in twenty twenty one. So to your be baby, fair. your baby can say, "I'm the only good yeah, thing to true. come out of." Tw- that's like, true. Tough bar to match, but like, like M's cool hat and the baby. That's about like the only positives I've seen on the horizon for my own life. It's so your fun. Hat and my baby. So. You know. uh, um, to answer your question, I'm good, but I'm jet setting again. I did not. I expect cannot this. with you. I cannot keep up. I can't keep up either. I was confused about dates. I didn't realize I was... Allison's cousin's getting married, and so I'm leaving, but I thought it was happening not this week. Months away. And then uh, Allison was like, oh, are you ready to... For Wednesday? And I went... Are you packed for Wednesday? (laughs) That's the most terrifying sentence if you're (laughs) not going anywhere in your own And I went, what's Wednesday? (laughs) Oh, I bet she loved that, by the way. (laughs) Well, so Wednesdays right now, there's a Marvel TV show that comes out every Wednesday. So I thought she was saying, like, you're ready to, like, I don't She said something Pack like, oh, you're ready, for, <laughs> are you ready for Wednesday? And then I was like, oh, what's Wednesday? And she's like, you haven't packed. Or some some combination of that. But I, I definitely thought it was a completely different direction than oh, where she went. So no. anyway, I'm leaving again. To, oh, my God. But I'll be back. This one's a short one. Can you so. imagine if Mothman was still on and M was just like... Actually, I'm just busy, Christine. You have to go. No, I will. I do know, like, that week, I, uh, well, hang on. I don't know anymore what my schedule is. I'll find out when we get there. I'll find out. I was like, I know about my schedule two weeks from now. I'm like, no, you don't. Nobody believes you anymore. (laughs) No, the hope is that I'm just, I'm just having a good time. So. You're in that hat. I can't really be mad at you or feel like any sort of... I just feel like you're going to be I'll living just, the dream. I'll just wear this hat anytime I'm confused, so at least I look cute doing it. You People know? are... You could do this little, like, who, me? Uh, and nobody can be mad. <laughs> um, real quick note before we start the episode. I meant to mention this earlier. I totally forgot. Um, I was just going to say the reason I drink this week is because... I kind of let it slip to M that Blaze's whole plan for the baby was to dress the baby as M for Halloween. And I'm so mad that I let it slip, but now I just, I need the world to know because I'm now I'm fully invested. Um, you know, I, 
honestly might actually i don't even know where i'm gonna be next week like i could forget very easily about this <laughs> um but i i am very excited if it does happen and I, like, I just like i kind of mentioned it on the fly because blaze keeps every time i'm like what should the baby i'm like i'm shopping for like a little baby lamb or a lion costume and i'm like what should the baby be in? and it so, blaze every time it's like funkle lamb and i'm like oh my god okay so but blaze like, is fully on board with the, it's his plan um so just hey, a, a warning for everybody um, I'm gonna let baby's first Halloween be all about me. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sounds, nobody's surprised. Not one that person sounds surprised. sounds super duper fun. And also, the fun part is, I have no idea what that means in I terms don't either. of dressing. Because it's like, <laughs> am I gonna be in, like, a superhero suit? Am I gonna be in this fucking hat? That am hat, I gonna be uh, in my pajamas? That's where my brain like, is going, is with this hat. I don't know. The so. possibilities are endless, because really, you could dress that baby up however you want, and I would probably dress that way also. You'd be so. like, yeah, that looks like me. Yeah. Yeah. The baby's actually- going to come out of me, and you're going to be like, oh, it looks just like me. I guarantee. <laughs> Christine. Oh, look you didn't what we tell did me. together. <laughs> it's, it's really cremid, isn't it? It's cremid with teeth. Oh, my gosh. As long as the baby doesn't have teeth, I will love the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I will take on the role of secondary parent wherever I need to. <laughs> That's the only caveat in your will that you're creating. <laughs> that baby cannot have little chompers until it's pr- until it's supposed to. So anyway, here is uh, the story of the week. And I feel like I'm going to regret this, speaking of Halloween, because I feel like it is a perfect Halloween story. Ooh. Um, So if I don't find something better on Halloween, I am going to feel bad about using this topic now. Um, Uh, We'll find something Halloween-y. We'll find something. We could always tell the very scary story of, you know, why there's two M's in the room. One's so tiny and it also came out of Christine. (laughs) And has teeth. (laughs) A a horror story waiting to be written. Um, Okay, so this is the non-story slash list of information a historical account of Friday the 13th. <gasps> That's a good one. I know what it is. I mean, I would say, I know you said this is a Halloween story. I feel like this would be a Friday the 13th story, but I guess we don't even release yep. on Friday, so that wouldn't even make no. sense. No, and we're recording on a Tuesday, so it's... It, uh, just go with it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> just roll with it. I did actually check to see when this would come out, and it does not come out on a 13th. It, like, fully so. doesn't. I also just checked. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well. I tried, except I didn't until it was too late. So, <laughs> um, okay. Here is the things you didn't know you needed to know I'm about very, Friday the 13th. I'm very excited. This sounds like I a like, fun fact episode, which I can't that's, wait. And you know what? You just nailed it on the head, Christine. Yes. I, I, I love doing notes on things that are just fun facts, because... Yeah. Even if someone doesn't care about scary stories, but now you've gotten dragged into listening to this podcast episode on like a road trip or something. Yeah. Hi, hi, by the way. I'm Em. Nice to meet you. Hey, I'm Christine. <clears throat> My baby has teeth. Well, it's great to meet you. <laughs> TBD on the teeth. TBD. Um, <laughs> but uh, I like they're now going to walk away and be like, oh, I, you know, I'm not a podcast lover, but I did learn something here today. So wow, I really hate that <clears throat> podcast. But guess what I know about Friday? You know, There have been times I'm sitting in a car with, like, like I'm not in charge of the aux cord, and I I get stuck listening to a podcast that I usually wouldn't listen to, but I learned something. I'm like, oh, that's so fun. So hopefully this is that for you. And also, maybe if you just listen to our podcast, you have fun. (laughs) Please don't leave. Okay, so um, Friday the 13th. So let me list a few Friday the 13th disasters while we're here. Let's just start start on a high or a low. I don't know. Yeah, start strong. Somewhere. So I did not write down the years just because I didn't, it's a lot of numbers, didn't want to confuse anyone. So here's just a random list of Friday the 13th that have happened throughout (gasps) the years. Okay. So there was a Russian plane crash in Moscow that killed 174 people. Oh, shit. There was a blizzard in Buffalo where 400,000 people lost power. Yikes. There was a, uh, the German bombing of Buckingham Palace. Oh, boy. A storm in Bangladesh that killed over 300,000 people. Oh. There was an Air Force plane that crashed into the Andes, and then rumor has it those the survivors had to resort to cannibalism. Oh, yeah, I know that story. Okay. And then you've covered this person, but I don't know how to pronounce the last name. The murder of Kitty Genovese? Oh, Genovese. Gen- okay, Genovese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is the reason for the... Um, 
the psychological mm. bystander effect. We right? did talk about yes, 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 yes. That was a okay. few months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a cruise ship crashed in Italy and killed a bunch of people. Um, a personal favorite is the one we have recently lived through, which is March, Friday the 13th, 2020, which is Ugh. when the COVID stay at home orders began. what happened. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> Don't worry. Every time I think of Friday the 13th now, it has been ruined by... That was on Friday the 13th? I don't mm -hmm. think I knew that. Oh, it, it was like the first fun fact I think we talked about. I think we did talk about it because we, we were still have. trying. We were still trying to figure out if we were going to go to our Seattle show. <laughs> oh, bless our hearts! <laughs> and then it happened, and everyone was like, "Oh, Friday the Thirteenth. That's how you know it's not good." So, oh, wow. Okay, I clearly missed that. Well, now I'm parent. I'm pretty sure I've no, been thinking I'm it for literally I'm years. I fully so. believe you. I don't have any doubt about it. I just can't believe I like forgot that fact. I feel like that's. Um... Uh. March 13th. I just want to double check because now I'm so paranoid. Yeah, it was Friday the 13th. I okay. believe you. I'm I sure was, you're right. I was doubting myself when I was Don't let me instill doubt in you, Amethy. <clears throat> Too late. So <laughs> speaking of doubt, let's talk about fear. So uh, the fear of the number 13 and the fear of Friday the 13th. Trick uh, so the... No. Is that right? No. Trick something. Mm -hmm. Well, know. it's a long one, so I don't expect you to know this one on the top of your head. Um so the there twenty five percent of the United States co considers itself superstitious. Michael Scott considers himself little stitious, which is <laughs> you and me. I am a little stitious. And uh, ten percent of the United States, uh, we fear the number thirteen, which is called triskaidekaphobia. Wow, Tris that sounds right. <laughs> Triskaidekaphobia. Trisk 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 yeah. Know. Something like that. Just, I don't know. Just good decophobia. Just good decophobia. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, an even worse pronunciation, get ready for it, is specifically a subcategorization of Triska decophobia is the fear of Friday the 13th. Not just oh, the number 13. Oh, there's a subcategory. <clears throat> there's a subcategory and two horrible ways of pronouncing it. Or two different oh, words that are go. horrible to pronounce. Triska decophobia. Sorry. I just wanted okay. to say it. Okay, now try to pronounce these. Okay. The fear of Friday the 13th is paraskivadecatriophobia, <laughs> which is also called sometimes frigatriskadecaphobia. Okay, let's see. Oh my fucking God. That's it a looks long like word. it. I mean, it doesn't it look. It looks like a German word. Uh, I mean, it's the a bunch of, of Latin, I'm sure. I don't know. <laughs> it's actually Greek. Oh, is what the internet tells me. Fun. So triskaidekaphobia is fear of 13. And paras, yeah. paraskevadekatriophobia is... Is the fear of Friday the 13th. That's and it can also, very specific. If you And you can also... Uh, another version of it, or another word for it, is the frigatriskadecaphobia. I like that one. Frigatriskadecaphobia. <clears throat> you will find out soon enough why it's called that. So... Okay. I kind of uh, maybe did because the internet says, sorry, I'm just going to ignore Wipe it. your little brain clean. I will. It's not okay. hard to do these days. <laughs> it's done. It's empty. <laughs> uh, it's like one of those old CDs where it's rewritable, you know? Oh, I was thinking one of those. Um... That was an, that was a pretty exclusive joke to only a certain <laughs> group of people. To 90s characters specifically. <laughs> 90s teen characters. Rewritable floppy disks. Okay. So uh, Friday the 13th is the most consistently feared day. And on average, around 17 to 21 million people in the United States are at least some level of nervous about Friday the 13th. Wow. Um, some people are really nervous about it and have a true, true fear and will refuse to drive anywhere, fly anywhere, get married, invest, make big payments. Or I refuse even... to get married today. That's our commitment. <laughs> well, you know what? Okay, so our personal and my and my family, our personal um, day that we don't like is June thirtieth. Oh, like so. My like great grandpa. The end of your birthday month. <laughs> you know what? It's the end of both our birthday months, so I don't like it either. To be fair, officially, yeah, actually, <laughs> I didn't even put that together, but that's another reason. Uh, no, my one of my ancestors died on June thirtieth, and so it became a thing where it's like, oh, June thirtieth is an unlucky day. Oh my gosh, 
And so we just like, it just became a thing where we don't like June 30th. And we all are, my grandpa even always told my mom, like, don't ever do, make any big decisions on June 30th. Just well, I'm sorry do if that's your birthday. It's m- my mom decided to go get married on that day. Oh, that didn't, wait, which, which marriage? The current one. Oh, good. Okay. I thought like one of the past so, ones and I was like, well, she proved that correct. But I guess this one's going strong. I feel like it would have made more sense if she had a a bad marriage that married on June 30th. This one, I feel like she's testing the waters but a maybe little she too broke, strong. Maybe she broke the curse, question mark? We'll time find will out tell. in due time. <laughs> but she got married on our version of Friday the 13th. That's so I was like, that's really a bold silly. move. If her grandfather that's... said, don't make any big decisions that day. And yep. she said, I know what I'll do. And she went, okay, papa. Like, oh. see you see <laughs> okay. you on the other side. Like, Grandpapa, all is well. <laughs> wow. Anyway, uh, I still am nervous for her because I heard my whole life, don't mess around with June 30th. And then she was like, so we're getting married on June 30th. And I went, are you forgetting a big part of that sentence? That seems like maybe. Yes, she is. <laughs> so, yeah, know? some people don't get married on Friday the 13th. They don't leave the house. Um, a lot of people have like a specified agoraphobia for that day only. Wow. Um, and so uh, according to oh, what was the company name? You have a friend here, by the way. <gasps> Giovanni! He was on the balcony boy. all day and he finally came inside. Does he feel a little warm? He feels a little sunny. Oh! Oh, and he smells like the sunshine, <laughs> I bet. Okay. He smells like dog breath. <clears throat> well, look, same thing to me. Okay, so. Uh, an estimated, because so many people don't go outside or don't go outside, won't leave the house, won't go to their job. Some people literally wow. won't go to their job. Some people won't, even if they're afraid to fly on Friday the 13th, people won't buy flights on Friday the 13th. People won't invest in the stock market. So apparently every Friday the 13th, an estimated 800 to $900 million is lost in business around the no. country. No. Because of Friday the 13th. Oh, my God. I always wondered if that if it ever affected. But I didn't think it actually would that strongly. Wow. So in a very, I think a very old article, um, because it wasn't called United Airlines. It was called Continental Airlines. (laughs) (laughs) So but they and Delta both said that they had not lost any money during Friday the 13th so that like prices never dropped on that day but also it could have if that article is old or if that information is old it would make sense because Friday the 13th wasn't as popularized as it is today really so we will I got a whole timeline for you okay um so we'll get there but it would make sense if that information is outdated because it was before Friday the 13th was like a big scary thing okay so um some studies actually find that although you would think Friday the 13th is the worst day to, like, go for a drive or anything. Uh, apparently, some studies have found that Friday the 13th is one of the safest times to drive because everyone is so extra cautious and some people aren't even on the road. <laughs> I was going to say, well, then there's so many fewer drivers. Like, yeah. yeah. Wow. And Dutch insur- so in the Netherlands, insurers have reported less accidents on Friday the 13th compared to other Fridays. You're kidding me. That's apparently, the, the average number is about 7,800 car accident reports per Friday. And on Friday the 13th, it's like 300 less. Wow. So it's a, it's, a, it's a small difference, but it's still a difference. But the fact that it's even like statistically <clears throat> relevant yeah. enough to track it, that's crazy. Um, since 1995 in Finland, they have held an annual National Accident Day where they raise awareness about safe mm. driving, and they always do it on a Friday the 13th. Interesting. So I, I wonder if that's like because subconsciously people are already like more on edge. That They're day. like, okay, I will take all the tips I can get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there, and the an interesting side note is that uh, the British Medical Journal in 1993 uh, said that people actually, although the car accidents are less likely to happen on Friday the 13th, there is a um, a peak or a, a rise in people making hospital visits that day compared to other Fridays. I wonder why so that is. I wonder what people are doing besides driving that what are causes you doing, a everybody? spike <laughs> that causes a spike in a hospital activity. I wonder if people are like more paranoid, like, oh my gosh, I have a boil on my arm. What if it's Maybe. cancerous? I don't know. Or if yeah, people are just like, I have Maybe. a Friday off. I'm gonna build a, a deck. 
And it's or maybe if you're like walk. afraid to leave your house, maybe it's more like household injuries. Right. Like building a deck. <laughs> like building a deck. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. So anyway, that's just a fun note that cars are safer or driving is apparently statistically safer. So but don't stay. There's inside. still a spike. There's so still, now there's a spike still another hospital. fear you have. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> So people, uh, which this, I feel like is common information. I, I feel like it's common information, but maybe that's, it's just me being odd, but people are so freaked out by the number 13 in general that a lot of corporations will avoid using 13 at all costs, including hotels won't have hotel, the whole floor, hotels and buildings. They skip it. If you ever notice at a hotel, there's a 12th floor and then a 14th floor. They check the elevator. Yep. But not a 13th floor. Or sometimes airports, um, they won't have, like, gate 13. Really? So they won't have That's row 13. Or they won't have 13 as the aisle number. It'll just go from 12 to 14. On um, airplanes? Apparently so. Wow. And then some streets won't even have, like, a 13th avenue if they're numbered streets. Oh, like 13, sure, sure. Which I never – I actually didn't know that one. I think so. that one I've heard. I didn't know about the airports, though. That makes sense. Yeah, so they'll do whatever they can to avoid 13. In fact, there was this really cool study in 2015. Um, apparently, like, over 80% of the United States, uh, their high-rises don't have a 13th floor, fun fact. 80%? Over 80% wow. of U.S. high-rises don't have a 13th Holy floor. Holy shit. And in 2015, the Atlantic uh, reported on a study of condos just in Manhattan uh, in New York. So of the 629 buildings that were condos in Manhattan with floors that were that had 13 or more floors. So out of all the out of all the condos that had at least 13 floors, only 55 of 629 actually labeled their 13th floor oh, as the 13th floor. My god. Which makes 9% of condos in Manhattan that have a 13th floor. 9%. Officially. Okay, yeah. you know what? And you're making a good point too of saying like they act, they didn't label cuz they technically have a 13th floor. They just don't call it that. Yeah, they just the call 14th. it the 14th floor. Yeah. Oh so if you're on the 14th God. floor in Manhattan, chances are you're on the 13th floor. Yeah, like odds are in any high rise apparently or 80% of them. Wow, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, so 80% in all at least or no, it was in all of the US, over 80% of high rises have wow. that, but in Manhattan specifically 91% that's have bananas. Yeah. So um, there are also famous people who were scared of the number 13. Specifically, I threw this one in because it was so ironic. Stephen King is scared of really? 13. Apparently, literally will not even watch channel 13 or what? any channels or any channel divisible by 13. Steve, um, wow, didn't he, know that about you. You should write a book, Steve, about your own fear. I'm sure he probably fun. did. Or is maybe, there? I don't know. Maybe not. Is there a book about 13? I don't know. Maybe maybe that was too far. Like he's like, I'll write about like killer dogs and cars, right. but 13 is too everything far. to avoid 13. I wonder if like what if his 13th page is the craziest or Ooh, something. Ooh, or like he, he skips the chapter 13. <laughs> so he he did say, or a par- this is I mean alleged, but. Um, in this article, it said that he won't even, like, if he ever needs to take a break or, like, go to the bathroom in the middle of reading, he'll never stop on a page divisible <gasps> by 13. Okay, that's interesting. Well, yep. you know, growing up, Channel 26 was Cartoon Network at my house, so, like, I would have been really bummed out if I, I couldn't watch also Johnny Bravo. <laughs> would have been so bummed. Um, um, apparently, apparently... Oh, jinx. Oh. Apparently, last year, Stephen King um, teased his fans with a friday potential friday the 13th novel idea so <gasps> fun i wonder if he would something. i wonder if he would be afraid to write it though like it would be unlucky well it he seems even... like he announced it in 2020 so it's sort of like he's giving all giving up all caution at that point i mean quarantine really made him just crack <laughs> number apparently him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah he'll even avoid the 13th step which fun fact in most modern homes ev- the staircase has 13 steps really so if he's avoiding how's he doing that <laughs> he never if he's goes avoiding upstairs the, the 13th step oh well, he probably just jumps the last step i guess oh okay 13 and then okay got you yeah i i only i didn't find that i didn't look that up on here but my my stepmom used to work in a construction company Interesting. and was like just so you know, on average, the staircase is going to have 13 steps. 
Yeah. I, there have been a few times. I, uh, what's interesting is every time I go upstairs, I count the steps in my head. And anytime there isn't a staircase that adds up to 13, I remember that staircase. So I'm oh, like, you're like, this Ooh. is a special staircase. I'm like, someone needed a, a higher ceiling downstairs or something for you to need that extra step. <laughs> Um, someone else who's scared of the number 13, uh, we don't know him today, unless maybe you have a really niche interest, is this famous Austrian composer named Arnold Schoenberg. But what's interesting about him is he was terrified of the number 13 his whole life. Um, he, uh, apparently he wouldn't even number the 13th measure in his music. He would call it 12A. His big fear was that one day he would die on a number, on a year that was divisible by 13. Um, because he was so scared of 13, he, uh, so whenever that year would show up, he'd go, oh, I might die this year. I might die this year. I might die this year. So it was oh. just a whole, <laughs> that so must like, be really fun for his family. Like this might be the last time you see me. It could guilt somebody. <laughs> like endlessly. imagine if he were around for the year 2013, he would have been a mess. Like he, mess. just because of 13. Um, and so when he turned 76, he finally felt safe. Cause I guess that year Uh-oh. wasn't a 13, um, and then his friend said, oh, well, 76, like seven plus six is 13. So that's a pretty unlucky Idiot age. friend. He died that year and he died on Friday the 13th. No, he didn't. Yeah. You know what? I have, you know who did, uh, not to like totally go. Uh, Let's know, do it. Whatever. But uh, Lore did a podcast about this guy, about Friday the 13th and this guy. And it was like very fascinating, but I had forgotten about like when he died. But um, was it like the composer, this guy? Yeah. Oh, because he did I had like no uh, Aaron Mankey did like a whole Friday the Thirteenth episode, and this guy was like one of the storylines. Jeez, I feel like I'm really like only giving you like a one bullet of no, uh, no, a no. Whole his, episode his, worth his episodes are shorter anyway, but uh, I just I was thought that sounded familiar, but I remember now it was the because I think he there was like a symphony number thirteen, and he like wouldn't do it or something. He like, oh, refused wow. to write the Thirteenth Symphony or something. Jeez, now I, I feel know, bad. I did not. No, no, no. Uh, this was ages ago. It was like years ago that I heard it, but um, I, I it just sounded familiar. But yeah, that friend is an asshole. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. No, actually, it's like, <laughs> oh, really? Did you have to mansplain that? Like, he could have had at least a peaceful last year of his life. Right. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, so the science behind superstitions in general, because I wanted to throw that in of like, why are people scared of 13? Or, right. Um, according to science, superstitions are most likely just trying to trick you into thinking you have control of an outcome. So, I mean, it's interesting. It makes sense. Uh, basic anxiety. Uh, prevention or but then it ends up causing anxiety um it's sort of anxiety taking over your your brain yeah (laughs) but but it can be a placebo like if you uh there was one study where uh half the people had to take a memory test with their lucky charm and the other half had to take a memory test but their lucky charm got taken away from them (gasps) not nice and it it was just the placebo effect of people with their lucky charm did better and or the lucky charm actually works just saying or or you're right, you know. Just saying. So even though we are, our big day is Friday the 13th, there are other places that have um, well-known unlucky days. Mm. So in Southeast Asia, uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, their uh, their big number that they're terrified of is four mm-hmm. instead of 13. Because apparently in Chinese or Chinese adjacent languages, four sounds like the word death. Right. In Japan, uh, it's basically the same thing for the word nine. It sounds a lot like torture or suffering. Oh, God. <laughs> so uh, they're they're just as, if not more, nervous around Wait, the number my four lucky as we are 13. Are four and nine, so good Ooh, job. Death and torture, Wait a Christine. Second. Also, that adds up to 13, just saying. Christine. I'm sorry. Uh, 49 was You're... always my lucky number walking chaos that is (laughs) well yeah (laughs) wow okay well hmm let me just stay on your good side then um your baby can have as many teeth as out of your will right now (laughs) i don't want it um okay so hmm how where did we go from here sorry four and nine torture death yeah got it got it well so they're just as weird about those numbers as we are about 13 like um a lot and Southeast Asia, they won't have like a fourth floor or things like that. So that's harder because it's probably more common, uh, probably more common <laughs> at four than 13. Yeah. Um, so also in Hispanic culture, as well as Greek culture. Interesting. Um, their day is not Friday the 13th, but Tuesday the 13th. Oh, no. I know. 
A whole nother so, day of the week to add. Oh, geez. So apparently, in at least in Greece, the reason that Tuesday the 13th is the unlucky day is because Tuesday is dominated by the god of war. Uh-huh. Um, so depending if it could be Aries or in like Roman mythology, it would be Mars. But uh, which, by the way, Tuesday is named after Mars, right? I thought it in was bun- Miracle. I thought it was t- That's uh, Wednesday. Mercury. That's oh Wednesday. tuesday is mars because like in certain languages like like in french it would be Marty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that's true mars, so it's named yeah, after the war. named after the god of war yeah interesting so <clears throat> i think they just assume chaos is on tuesdays uh, so sense. you would you'd be walking down the street that i love day. tuesdays <laughs> so <laughs> today's tuesday yay uh <laughs> so uh also fun fact the fall of constantinople happened on a tuesday apparently there was an earlier fall of constantinople in 12 and it's- the year 1204, which was also on a Tuesday. Um, in Italy, uh, fun fact, it's not Friday the 13th, but Friday the 17th. That's oh, oh, my God. If you're in any of these places and then you move to another one, you're like having to add all these different <laughs> holidays. If, you, if you're like, maybe spend your Friday the 17th like in the U.S., but your Friday the 13th in Greece or Italy. I mean, right, you know, that's true. It's just an excuse to travel by summer. Yeah. Home. Summer just in a different ho- Just place. hop around so you're never in the right, the wrong day it's in the wrong place. Very smart, M. I like that. So uh, the reason that 17 is an unlucky number for Italy instead of 13 is because 17 in Roman numerals is XVII. And if you rearrange it, it becomes VIXI, which apparently VIXI or Vic- Vixi, Vixi. Vixi. A, 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 um, <laughs> apparently that is translated to basically like some sort of death omen in Italian. Oh, sure. oh my God. It's, it cut, it ends up translating to, I have lived or my life is over of so, some sort of like, I'm no longer living. Well, that so, is quite uh, uh, a formula to have yeah. to get to that. But wow. So if you rearrange the numbers for 17, it ends up spelling out this omen and okay. therefore they don't like the 17th, okay. which fun fact uh, in the year 2000, there was this like straight to video movie in the US and it was uh like a parody <laughs> horror movie where it's like you know like scary movie and scary mm-hmm. movie too and so they had another one where it was like uh instead of scream i know what you did last summer it was called uh shriek if you know what i did last friday the 13th so it was oh supposed my to, god what a so combo was, I think it was supposed to be combining Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and the Jason Voorhees right. Friday the 13th movies. <laughs> um, and so it was, Shriek, if you know what I did last Friday the 13th. But when that movie, which went straight to video, by the way, which is why I've never seen it. Apparently, Coolio was in it. Well, um, that's the perfect reason to see it now. I think that we'd probably have a blast watching that. Well, when it got uh, translated for Italian audiences, it got renamed, instead of Do You Know What I Did Last Friday the 13th, to shriek do you have something to do on friday the 17th <laughs> <laughs> yes no. uh, it's watch this movie i, I guess. guess this is my new plan wow what a translation i love that whoever so, did that was like this will like, this will do <laughs> this is so fun so do you have something to do on friday the 17th i apparently die i guess is like the premise of the movie <laughs> it's the last um, day of my life i guess so uh interesting also about italy is that 13 is actually considered a lucky number there okay um about perspective apparently they like they're how if something if we're winning something like we say jackpot the it translates for them jackpot translates into fare tradisi which means making 13 okay so it's i don't know if i pronounce that right it's a baker's dozen it's a baker's does look i love the number 13 that's <laughs> it sounds like an extra snack time to me <laughs> um but so yeah for them 13 is like affiliated with like winning and and good fortune okay. so also um ancient egyptians thought 13 was lucky um and but so even though the like italy specifically and i'm sure some other areas in the world if they didn't have any like, bad blood with 13 apparently we as a nation have popularized it so much that the superstition of 13 and Friday the 13th is now spreading into other areas. Oh, of course. And 13 is now becoming an unlucky number in areas like oh, Italy. No. So sorry to do that to we you. We just We've spread done worse. some more lucky numbers then. I know. 
Jeez. Oh, uh, we have enough what, on We should shit. love 17. Let's make that a thing. I like it. Let's do it. So um, another fun fact, if you are someone who cares about Tuesday the 13th, like you are in in Greek culture or Spanish speaking areas, mm-hmm. um, if you want to look out for Tuesday the 13th, you can spot a Tuesday the 13th when that month begins on a Thursday. That's fun. so smart, Em. So if the first of the month is on a Thursday, you know you got yourself a Tuesday the 13th. You better stay inside. You better put your work plans in now. Put your schedule in. And if you're in Italy and you want to know how to spot a Friday the 17th, if the month starts on a Wednesday, that's how you know that you okay, got a so Friday the 17th Okay, so if a month starts on coming. a Wednesday or Thursday, we're already screwed. <laughs> Basically, hump day, that means you got a Friday the 17th coming. So what about the 13th, Friday the 13th? I was going to ask you, do you oh. know what day of the month's it, our absolutely month. not oh really? okay so this was a um this was actually a fun fact i've known in since middle school because i used I to brag knew. about it no i never even thought that I, like it never even occurred to me you could calculate that i was uh, that i was that annoying kid where i thought i had a fun fact and i would just scream it at people so uh anyway I mean, it, you, you would have impressed me so for <laughs> what it's worth probably not much i would have impressed you the first time and then you would have heard me tell 10 more true. people and you would have been like oh my god give it up not this again <laughs> Um, so if you're looking to spot a Friday the 13th, the month has to start on a Sunday. Okay. Interesting. I Which makes sense that, because but... it would just be like oh, one duh, whole like week two... plus six right. days. Okay. 13 right. days. Yeah. All right. So, Sunday. uh, <clears throat> so Sunday, Wednesday, thir- so you're already like, we're already almost halfway through just, the week, uh, the, we the might week, as well yeah. pick four other dates oh, that always God's align sake. with the other days of the, the calendar. Just Fridays, I guess, are trouble. Uh, but, uh, so why do we hate slash fear 13? What does 13 I don't mean? Know. So, uh, I looked into the numerology of 13. Okay. Just to see if if that direction gave me any more answers. And it actually gave me a lot more questions because 13 sounds like a pretty dope number. That's what I thought. I feel like I've heard that, that it's actually like a positive thing in numerology. Yeah, I was expecting it to be all about like turmoil, but it was actually like really solid. The tower. So, yeah. So 13 is here just, here's a couple words or phrases that have 13 uh, associated with it. Okay. Focus pragmatism pragma pragmatism is that the right word did i spell that right pragmatism Prag- i don't pragmatism know. yeah um i don't know which that one was just like me with my fucking excellent tante i've been waiting all episode for a time to bring that up so i'm glad that you did i told i leaked to christine that i really struggle with saying the word excellent while in in spanish like how if you say the word excellent in spanish excelente. it would be right excellent sure. I can't say it, and every time I think it, which is often, I think, ah, excellent, Tante. <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old. It's so I random. don't know what's wrong with me, but I think it all the time. Like if I like when That's I get out of my part. when I get out of my car and I lock the door I, in my head, I'm like, all right, like excellent, Tante. I lock the door. Like we were about like, to record an ad, and I'm just like stumbled, like. Visibly, well, because I was I like, know why. I was like, oh, my audio, my software is already like set up. Oh, excellent, Tante. And then in my head, I was like, I know that's not the right word, but I can't unsay it. It's the only way I know how. And then I can't even if I think about the word for too long, I can't even pronounce it the right way. I have no idea how. How do you say your thing? But my thing. Oh, excellent. How- the yeah. Unless thing? unless I was repeating you immediately after, my brain just. Forgets. It just doesn't. It it adds that... a few letters for fun. Excellentante. I don't. I don't get it. You know what? <laughs> Tante. It just sounds so funny. Oh my god. It sounds but like I... a catchphrase from some like '90s sitcom. Like you just. <laughs> well, Excellentante, I... dude. It... <laughs> surfs up it's excellent tante today it li- um, i mean it literally sounds like that <laughs> i don't know what the deal is i whenever i'm like cleaning my room and then i'm done or like if i like like last night i made a really good grilled cheese and after i ate oh. it I went, wow that was pretty excellent tante that like, deserves an excellent tante for what it's worth <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with me i mean i just love that like <clears throat> in a couple of weeks ago i talked about september and people somebody tweeted at me this tweet that was like I don't know if you saw it, but it said like before you like pro tip before you start a podcast, ask your friends if you say any words weird. And someone was like, <laughs> Christine, you should have done this. And I was that like, that sounds yeah, I like 
a bad podcast tip though because half the reason our podcast does so well is because we laugh at each other about shit like excellentante like half as hardly (laughs) if if i asked you early on how to say that word i would we would never have this conversation i would have said yeah you're saying it right and then made you say it on air so (laughs) okay you're right that was actually solid advice from from whoever suggested that Okay. Anyway, I love excellent tante. I like I I don't I'm not a Spanish speaker, so I feel like maybe I don't have the right to say I love it, but I do love it for what it's If worth. you're a Spanish speaker and it just makes you feel so bad, I am really sorry. I really it really my brain just wrote it that way and just put a stamp of permanence the on it. The groove there. is just like in the brain track. You can't it's, get rid of it. I can't I try I really do try and every time what comes out, like if I'm trying to say it the right way, I go ex- excellent excellent Hey. No, I can't do that. I can't get it. <laughs> I, I love this it. little uh, tidbit. I see. Uh, I never knew. I love that we're still learning things about each other. You know, still September learning this. and excellent Tante. That's part of the adventure, you and me. It is. So, um, okay, the numerology of thirteen. It's focus, pragmatism. pragmatism thank you. Um, apparently, independence, being creative, and building a secure and stable foundation. Okay, that pretty so solid. like things that I don't really associate with, but things that are good. <laughs> like I wish I were more of like a Capricorn or Virgo uh, or somebody uh, who. Apparently it all. So here, I, again, this is someone who v- very learned a very like quick shorthand of numerology. Uh, this is not, if I ever cover numerology, this is not the episode. So please don't, if I butcher it, I promise I will learn more before I actually discuss it one day. But apparently the number 13 there's five um there's five numbers that are important to you when you are looking at numerology there's other numbers too but there's like a five core okay numbers um and i didn't go through all of them for 13 but uh i did apparently the like most basic construction of 13 would be uh 13 is made up if of its individual digits and it's combination number. So 13 would be made up of one and three for 13 right. and one plus three, which is four. Sure. So the, whatever those numbers, whatever they represent, like their meaning behind those numbers, those are the main things that make up what 13 means. Got it. So it's like and the core digits that you can associate with. like Yeah. Okay. And so the combination number, which would be four because one plus three is four. Sure. That holds the most weight. So when you're, if you were in a kitchen, a potions lab, and you're building 13, you would use mainly four as the ingredient and like a dash of one and a dash of three, which were its individual. Oh, digits. okay. That's interesting. Does that make sense? Yes. So four is considered the foundation number because okay. it's the combination of the individual digits. Oh, cool. So, and the foundation number is the one that like has most of its essence built into okay. this number. Okay. So four means apparently mindfulness um being uh, strategic and diligence so okay. that's m- mainly what 13 is about but also it's got a little dash of the meaning of one which is independence and exploration and a little dash of three which means creative self-expression and charisma Ooh, yeah that so sounds lovely ultimately uh this means that 13's quote fundamental meaning all of 13 when you combine it and you like it pops out of the oven this is what Mm. you've got uh 13 is a problem solver is diligent and is all about certainty okay very interesting i looked us up christine did you okay wow now i'm excited so i didn't uh i it was very long. It was going to it was gonna be a lot to try to get through that. So I just, I'm giving you your numbers, and then that way you can look this up for yourself later. Oh, fantastic. And also, if you are someone out there who is much more uh, expertise at, at, at numerology, um, you can, if you want to, help us figure out what these mean. Um, help if you want. me. So I looked up what our five core digits are. Cool. You and I share two of the same five core digits, <gasps> which might us. be might be why we're so compatible. So uh, the five core numbers, there's the life path number. Okay. I've heard of that. The heart's desire number. Ooh. The expression number. And then the birthday number and the personality number. 
Oh my god. I wanna know my personality number. It's probably like zero. <laughs> <laughs> so we share a life path number and a heart's desire number. We do? Which How cute. If, we share the same heart's desire. That's sound so important. sweet. That yeah. sounds really important. So the life path number apparently is the most crucial number. Okay. And we do share that one. <gasps> what is so it? So our number, if you are a numerologist, please write these down. Our <laughs> our life path number is three. Really? Interesting. Which it I in a very quick glance at what three means, it means we've got spunkiness and we're fun. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, and then our heart's desire, we both share this number, which is eight. Interesting. I wouldn't have guessed those numbers. Um, we differ on our expression, birthday, and personality ones. Um, I think birthday is literally just like the date you were born because you got four and I got three. That would make sense. So there you have that. Um, our personality ones, if any, if based on your thinking of what a personality number would be, you scored much higher than I did because... (laughs) I my personality is apparently a two, and your personality is a five. Okay, well, two is a is your lucky number, or twenty two is your lucky number. So yeah, so I'm fine with that. Um, and then the last one is our expression number, which yours is a four and mine's a one. Interest. Okay. Wow. I wish I knew what this meant, but wow, this sounds cool. Okay, I'm gonna. Have it to would have this. taken literally no, no. all day. And so nobody's. It's not relative to other people necessarily. But so wow. If, okay. If you're into numerology, I'm at least giving you like the 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 fast bullets so you I can do whatever you want with that. I would love to learn more. You should cover that someday. <clears throat> okay, uh, good to know. I will that maybe really interesting do a whole thing on our numerology charts one day. I would love that. So, uh, as I'm looking at the numerology of thirteen, I also a lot of articles about. Uh, how unlucky 13 is mention the importance of the number 12 coming before it really yes so apparently huh. 12 in mathematics is like a perfect number right okay i feel like i've heard that like a super duper like cannot get better is the golden child of numbers <laughs> okay yeah uh-huh. and so <laughs> i'm already like bitter toward it like <laughs> real now off. i'm like ew <laughs> that guy like got a full ride scholarship yeah, we he didn't get it. deserve um, 100%. So uh, even ancient like Sumerians, they they developed their whole number system around the number 12. Really? So I mean, this it makes sense. Like 12. Okay. Sorry. No, no. Go for it. What were you going to say? <laughs> Just like 12 months. 12, I feel like that's a very yeah. so buildable 12 months, number. 12 months in a year. Mm-hmm. Um, two sets of 12 hours in the day. 12 uh-huh, yeah. zodiacs. Oh, There's yeah. 12 uh, gods of Olympus. There's 12 mm-hmm. tribes of Israel. There's 12 even... 12 Days of Christmas, there's the 12 Apostles, there's a dozen roses, uh, 360 degrees, which is a circle, divides perfectly into 12. Oh my gosh. it just works out very well. It's a very harmonious number. Okay, I love that for the 12. Good job, 12. And then in comes Stumbling 13. It's just like throwing everything off Baker's dozen. It's like nobody asked for this extra donut, but okay. (laughs) I did. I mean, Um, Em did. Em ruined it everything. Everything. So Ruined uh, it everything, Christine. Excellent, Ponte. Good job. Excellent, Ponte. So, um, yeah, 13 just kind of shows up and is like overshadowed by 12. And so a lot of people think that maybe our subconscious just doesn't like 13 because it throws everything oh, that's off kind of sad it's like the like the 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 black sheep yeah like it, it's just like causing discord and it didn't even mean to so <laughs> oops <laughs> um it's the christine of numbers if you will <laughs> well um, <laughs> i mean we've already kind of determined that earlier when <laughs> walking chaos so here is the i think the rest of my notes are just the timeline of how 13 got to be to get I its, am so its personality. Fascinated. I have its personality. Oh, <laughs> this is a yeah. Use all this, and then we can write like a Tinder profile for it at the end of like <laughs> what makes it attractive. Aww. Okay. So the rumored original reason for thirteen being so unlucky is because it dates all the way back to one of the oldest legal documents to exist. Like what to exist anywhere? It is called the Code of Hammurabi or Hammurabi. Sure, sure, um, sure, 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 sure. And in it, the there was a apparently a list of laws, and the thirteenth law didn't get written down in the code. So people think that what? might be the original time that 
13 was excluded from something because ouch in one of the original legal documents like in the world they intentionally quote didn't include the 13th law and, as and do if, we know what the law is or is it because it wasn't written down we don't know it i think we don't know what it is because That's the law wasn't written so down. sneaky and but you know what apparently it wasn't as intentional as people think it is that's why i said the rumored origin it wasn't it was apparently literally just a typo. Like, they just fucking forgot to write it down. <laughs> Poor 13. So 13 from literally it the oldest documents on Earth is like, has had a rough go. Oh. Um, and apparently also at that time when they were writing the code or writing the list of laws, that wasn't even, like, expected or part of the, like, the system of how it had to be written in. So it's not like, oh, you have to write in the laws and list them out. It was just like how someone chose to do it and happened to forget 13. It was just someone really they sloppy writing it out. They were like, I have a out. good plan and <laughs> got distracted. Ugh. So here are the more um, official origins to 13. I say official even though they're both both based in some version of mythology. Basically, it was either Norse mythology, Christian influences, or a combo of the two. Um, but I tried to timeline it out and it sounds like Norse mythology was probably the most likely official place that this came from. Okay. So in Norse mythology, which is fun, by the way, because I get to talk about Thor's family, you know? Yes, you do. And you, it feels like it's right on brand for you. Very on brand. I get, yeah. I get to talk about Loki and Jesus all at the same time. Wow. So, wow. You're perfect <laughs> duo. <laughs> Definitely like polar opposites in my opinion. So it is fun. <laughs> um, so there were, in Norse mythology, there were, there's, there's a story of 12 gods who threw a party together, a uh, dinner party. and well, fun. Loki, who is the uh, god of mischief, the trickster mm. god, he and Thor's brother, by the way, uh, he is not invited to this party, but he arrives anyway. So he becomes the 13th attendee at this Aha. party. Aha. Okay. And since 12 was already such a perfect number or seen as a perfect number, 12 people being invited was almost like the perfect amount of people at this dinner. And then Loki showing up upsets the balance of even oh my the, 12, the 12 gods showing up. Interesting. So during this dinner party, Loki tricks one of the gods into killing his brother. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> what a fun prank. What a what a silly little thing to do. <laughs> silly little prank. Well, so <laughs> it was because uh just to give more insight real quick, one of the gods was like could not die, was impenetrable, but apparently his like kryptonite was mistletoe. And <laughs> same. <laughs> so is Santa. Yeah. Um and so uh anyway, Loki learned that his kryptonite was mistletoe and created a weapon out of mistletoe and then convinced his brother like hey go stab him because their thing their favorite thing was like always trying to like like punch me and nothing yeah gonna yeah happen. like yeah. shoot arrows at me nothing's gonna happen and then loki gave uh the brother an arrow with mistletoe on he the tip of it too it. far and said, yeah, try to shoot your brother. Ha, ha, ha. And then he went, okay, I do this all the time. And then he ends oh, up dying. Oh, buddy. Oh, no. <clears throat> so uh, this We're ends up. an awkward up... dinner party. True. Like, what did you think was going to happen, Loki? I mean, like, right. I'm just thinking of Tom Hiddleston in awkward silence at a, at a gala. Like, that's all I can imagine <laughs> yeah. right now. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, the only one laughing in the corner. The only like... one. <laughs> so, uh yeah, so apparently this brought, like, evil or darkness to the world. And uh, after this story of Loki, this is this, this was, like, where the trope of the evil 13th member started spreading around the world. It's pretty evil. Like, that one was pretty intentionally not very nice, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. So it, be, it became this well-known trope of, mm -hmm. like, oh, it even became and still is, if you're, like, talking, like, serious etiquette, like super strict etiquette uh there is still the rule of like you should never have 13 people come to a dinner party or like you should I never see. have a party with just 13 people so fun fact if you are friends with a superstitious person and you're the 13th person getting invited bring an extra bring a plus one bring a plus one <laughs> bring yeah. a plus one um but yeah i remember or my grandma stay home that's my advice right stay yeah home. Maybe invite 13 introverts and no one will show up. There you um, go. Then you have a solo party. My favorite. I remember my grandma even. She was a like a stickler for like uh, social etiquette. Attire, or social etiquette. Yeah. 
And she always told me, like, never have a party and only have 13 people there. Interesting. My stepmom is very intense about the number 13. Like, and little things like at dinner parties, she would, if somebody spilled salt, she would, like, make you throw it over your left yeah. shoulder. And, like, it wasn't a joke. Like, it was it was very serious. And she would not continue the <laughs> event until you had done that. You had to set the salt down before you picked it up. Like, so many little things. What's the superstition for, like, smashing glass at a wedding? Like, oh, what's that uh, about? <laughs> well, that one is family tradition, <laughs> and if you're asking. Uh, family tradition that nobody else seems to have known about <laughs> so you know for what it's worth, honestly if she said it was for good luck i just believe her i'd be like okay that, that is what she said and she did once throw a wa- someone's waterford crystal champagne glass at a fireplace at a new year's party and said it's for good luck then my dad had to replace the whole like six oh, glass six no. flute set so he didn't oh, find it very no. lucky but you know they got a whole new set of waterford crystal out of it so oh my god who's lucky now <laughs> <laughs> You tell me. So, uh, but yeah, so I mean, that goes all the way back to literally Loki. So That's there you have crazy. it. That's crazy. I would never have known that. Yeah. And even though now 13 was like kind of at the very beginning, getting a, getting a bad taste of being unlucky, Friday still wasn't seen as unlucky. True. The Friday I hadn't even yeah thought of. In fact, Friday... <clears throat> Everyone loved Friday. I love Friday I to this day. Friday. Rebecca Black loves Friday. She certainly um, does. <laughs> she, actually, she probably fucking hates Friday. She actually, now. you know what? You're probably <laughs> right. She probably hates it more than anybody. <sighs> um, so anyway, if uh, Fridays were like super loved during this time, in fact, Loki's mom slash Odin's wife uh, is the goddess of. So her name is Freya, which is also sometimes translated to Frigga. Mm. and fridays are named after her so like that's her day her day like so and people fucking love friday because people friday we all love a casual friday because people loved her people loved loki's mom um and so uh i actually don't know i'm pretty sure she was Loki's mom. I'm thinking MCU. I know she was Odin's wife. That's for damn sure. I mean, what do you um, mean like Frigg? Like you can't dislike somebody with that <laughs> name. She, uh, so she's the goddess of love, fertility, marriage, and motherhood. Whoa. And so she's like all about like being a mom, loving on family, loving on love. And loving on love. <laughs> and Fridays were associated after that because they were named after her. Fridays were associated with like, it, like femininity they were like oh. the day to celebrate women love that and so even all the way into pagan times people uh apparently would celebrate uh women on fridays plus in the pagan era uh the number 13 represented women because of the 13 lunar phases okay so now we're getting somewhere here I'm, aka I'm the cycles the yeah. menstrual cycles so i'm i'm, I'm getting it love it <clears throat> So between Friday being about femininity, 13 being about femininity, uh, one, no, could assume, one, one could assume one could assume that Friday the 13s during the pagan era were just like a big old women's appreciation. Sounds thing. like a fucking great holiday to it me. It sounds like a fucking party. So if you're out there listening and you hate the patriarchy, yes, exactly. maybe make Friday the 13th. We could put a new spin on it, you and me all together and Let's have a big it. old... Uh, a woman's celebration day every Friday what the 13th. starts on a Sunday coming up? Because I'm ready to party. I will tell you because I have that written <laughs> down. Don't you worry. Uh, <clears throat> and so basically now we've learned that from Norse mythology all the way down to the pagan era, people fucking love Fridays. And at least in uh, in paganism, 13 is considered lucky despite the stories from Norse mythology. Love that. And both represent women. So who would come in and stomp on good things about women? Maybe a patriarchal religion called Christianity. No. Which started gaining momentum around the Middle East. They would never. So in the Bible, during the Last Supper, it basically reestablishes old beliefs of 13 from Norse mythology with the evil guest because (sighs) Judas was the 13th guest to the Last Supper who betrayed Jesus, and the next day's crucifixion was on a Friday. That's that's it. Good Friday. Not so good anymore. So now you've got this new religion that is booming that is saying, oh, Fridays and Ugh. 13 are actually bad. Everyone just wants to have a good time, and they got to come in and ruin it. According to the Bible, or I, I, don't, I did not read the Bible for this, to be clear. I'm going off of sources that tell me the Bible says this, but on Fridays in the Bible... These things also happened. Eve gave Adam the apple. Cain killed Abel. 
<laughs> the great flood for Noah's Ark came in. Oh, and no. The, and the Temple of Solomon collapsed, all on Fridays. Whoopsies. <laughs> Oopsie daisies. And Judas was the 13th guest. So, Oh, no. Um, so while paganism is like glorifying 13 for women and glorifying the goddess of love and fertility and sex and all the things that Christians don't, you know, like super duper fundamentalist Christians would say, like, maybe you shouldn't Let's worship not celebrate those things. That, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Christians came in and said, no, all of this is sinful. And also you're pagan. So let's just like also start branding you as fucking witches. So, (laughs) so, uh, also Christmas is ours now. Oh, you're right. Yeah. 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 Jesus's birthday now, but Halloween, no one should be fucking touching that. Halloween. That's why we took that back. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But basically this is where the origin of 13's bad representation seems to have started. Interesting. And it's also how Friday the 13th started growing a bad rep because all those bad it. things happen on Friday. So it's just a combo of Friday and 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. So uh, naturally, when pagans love it, it will one day be just like poo pooed on by like the patriarchy, <laughs> which by the way makes Friday the 13th sexist. Let's just be clear. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking. Cause so, I was like, well, if in we're going to rebrand need, ourselves, like if, if you're going to be one of those people who's in a road trip right now and you are getting some sort of fun fact out of this, let your takeaway be that Friday the 13th is sexist. It's actually a really great day. If we're trying to be more equal and loving toward everyone. Mm hmm. So here are the the dates where Friday the 13th just became more and more established as an unlucky time. So in 1307, excuse me, I burped. <laughs> in 1307, on an actual Friday the 13th, by the way, King Philip IV ordered his men to arrest and imprison the Knights Templar. Oh. Who also ended up later, many of them ended up being executed. So this became, this is not true, but we can thank the Da Vinci Code, um, which uh, <laughs> apparently it it really got this rumor going that Friday the 13th became a thing because of this 1307 Knights of Templar raid. Okay. Because of the Da Vinci Code in 2003, we think that that's where Friday the 13th came from. Not true. Here to squash the record. But it, is, it did happen to happen on a Friday the 13th, and a lot of those people did get arrested and were later killed. But I, I think in the Da Vinci Code, it says something like on a Friday the 13th, everyone was murdered, which like is not true. I definitely read that book, but <clears throat> it's been a long time. Well, fun fact, it did happen on a Friday the 13th that people got arrested, but it's not as bad as I guess the Da Vinci Code made it out to I be. See. Nor was that, nor was that the first like bad Friday the 13th and where all the origins come from. Gotcha. It like completely negates Loki. Let's put it that way. Oh, so, God So then in the 1390s, Jeffrey Chaucer wrote the Canterbury Tales. And and there mentions that Friday is, quote, a day of misfortune. So it's just perpetuating that Friday is not a good time. Um, At the same time uh, that the Canterbury Tales came out, a bunch of prominent figures actually started, like, dismissing Fridays and saying they didn't like Fridays, but they would never say why. And Chaucer probably influenced them, I'm guessing, um, but the interesting thing is Chaucer as a, or Chaucer, Chaucer, um, Chaucer. Uh, apparently in his writing, he was known for like mocking and like sarcasm. So yeah. when he called Friday a day of misfortune, he could have literally just been like trolling people. Like satirical. Yeah. And he ended up convincing people that Friday See, was a I, bad day. It's, it's a lot of power these folks wield. I know. So now we're really time traveling all the way to 1592. Okay. And there's a playwright who wrote the idiom Friday face in his story, implying that someone (laughs) looked upset and, quote, gloomy. Oh, interesting. So apparently if you've got a Friday face, you look gloomy. So I don't know what happened in between the 1390s and the 1590s for Friday to, like, get this rep. But I love a good Friday face. uh, My Friday face. I've got a happy Friday face. (laughs) I am gloomy on Fridays, but it's because I'm ready to take a big nap. Right, right. Um, in the 1630s, a playwright named William Rowley also wrote, quote, a plague of Friday mornings, the most unfortunate day in the whole week. So, like, I would argue by, like, 1600, Fridays are known as unlucky for sure. Yeah, I mean, and they're pushing this agenda real hard, especially because nowadays, like, everyone loves Friday. Even though we don't like Friday the 13th, I feel like Fridays in general are a very positive day. So, 
there's quite so this fun. agenda they're pushing. Like it didn't. Well, stick. you could really blame the industrial industrialization. Industrialism. Okay, that's a fair point. I guess we didn't have the five day work week back then. Yeah, so that was yeah. when pe- we really liked Friday. Oh, but up okay. until then, I get you. up until then, Friday was apparently a Just bad like day. Another day. In the eight in the 1650s, uh, another uh, poet wrote, "Quote." Now Friday came, you old wives say, of all the weeks, the unluckiest day. You so, old wives. <laughs> Don't put it on us old wives, okay? Jeez. Us old 18-year-olds, yeah. <laughs> so in, in 1869, there was a biography about a composer named G- Gioacchino Rossini. And apparently he also thought Rossini. Fridays were... He thought Fridays were unlucky. He thought the number 13 was unlucky, and he died on a Friday the 13th. Oh, I wonder if that's the... Uh, one of the composers was in that episode. I don't know which one. Maybe it was this one. I didn't know how many composers were There's dying. There's fucking two. Holy two at least shit. that have died on Friday the 13th. In the 1880s, this is where uh, it becomes, like, I guess, super popular. Uh, up until then, by the way, that's the 1300s through the 1800s, and wow. already there's a few mentions of Friday being unlucky, and I'm sure... I did as much research as I could, but like I, for all I know, like there's like some big thing I'm fucking missing, but that looks like in the last 500 years, people are aware that like Friday is not a lucky time. Right. And by the 1880s, this guy named Captain William Fowler, who was this big famous soldier, he like knew people that were higher up and all that. He felt like 13 had a bad stigma to it. And he realized that 13 was weirdly found often in his life. Um, so he decided that he was going to create a society meant to debunk the stigma of 13. <laughs> oh, okay. Which, by the way, means by the 1880s, 13 was that unlucky that someone wanted to create a society about this, an organization. That's wild. So the organization was called the 13 Club, and oh, it was <laughs> allegedly held in room 13 of the Knickerbocker Cottage. Of course. And he held his first meeting on a 13th date. And the rumor is they ate a 13 meal course, which like, hello, I would love to be invited. Wow. I'm on board for that part. Their inaugural meeting was on a Friday, the 13th at 8, 13 PM. And, uh, one big superstition again at the time was that if there were 13 guests in a room, something bad would happen or even one of them might die. So to prove it wrong, the whole point of the 13 club was for on the 13th every month, 13 people, 13 members of this group would dine together and uh, I guess prove that none of them died. Um, they even had to <laughs> wow, like. Wow, impressive. <laughs> they even had to walk under like ladders and shit to get into the oh, building. Dear. They were like just defying all superstitions. Breaking mirrors and shit. Um, and several members of the 13 Club, by the way, were presidents. Oh. So there was Arthur, uh, President Arthur, President Cleveland, Benjamin Harris, Teddy Roosevelt. Um, one person who was definitely not invited was FDR because he hated Friday the 13th and he hated Fridays and he hated 13s. So, <laughs> okay. He hated them individually. Okay, he hated okay. them combined. Uh, Ooh. but yeah, so the 13 club was like well known. I love at, the 13 club. Uh, there was another author in the 1880s who called Friday, quote, a day when misfortune is aptest to fall. Uh oh. Uh, and in the 1890s, the Dictionary of Phrase and Fable wrote, but once on a Friday, tis ever they say, a day when misfortune is, oh, is aptest to fall. So there you go. So fucking right there. Uh, and then in 1907, this is where Friday the 13th officially became a thing. So Friday the 13th, although it had been heard of, it was mainly 13 being a bad day. Christians maybe not liking Fridays, but they mm-hmm. were never too, totally together as Friday the 13th uh, is bad. Okay. That happened at the turn of the century at 1907. Okay. So fun fact for all the people who got dragged into this episode, Friday the 13th became a thing in 1907 because there was a <laughs> book called Friday the 13th written by Thomas William Lawson uh, about a broker, a stockbroker who used Friday the 13th uh, and its superstition of being unlucky to infiltrate the stock market. Oh. I know. Not what you thought. No. But I guess so, now you even said that businesses lose money in, on Friday the 13th. So, uh, I guess since 1907, if you looked at any Friday the 13th, maybe stock markets are nervous that that story will come true. Interesting. So uh, it's likely that this was the first time that Friday and 13 were combined together to both be a negative superstition. and Because... 
once that book came out, that was 1907. But a year later in 1908, the New York Times cited Friday the 13th as an unlucky day. And it was the first time it was mentioned in the press as an unlucky day. Okay. Okay. And it it happened a year after this book came out. So we're guessing that's where New York Times got its information from. But the article that they wrote about for Friday the 13th was that a senator in town had fearlessly uh, introduced 13 bills into the Senate on Friday the 13th. Le gasp. Le gasp. Uh, apparently the, the mention itself is, quote, Friday the 13th holds no terrors for Senator Owen. So <laughs> What a that, brave man. What a brave man. So it's definitely implied there. And after that, the New York Times, I guess, is the first ones to really spread it. And then we all ran with it. And then we all ran with it. And a, f- a from 1908, when that article came out, I guess the it just kind of grew on its own, and it officially solidified in only the 1980s. You really? Guess why? The movie. The movie. So officially, oh, you mean Friday the, the movie, 13th. What are you doing on September? Or wait, what, is it? what are you doing <laughs> what on you, the 17th? You want to go on a date Friday the 17th or something? <laughs> so you want to uh, record that day, or are you out of town? <laughs> That's my question. Um, So officially, it became a bad day of Friday the 13th, when in the 1980s, the horror franchise, Friday the 13th, came out. I mean, it makes sense. That's pretty, pretty out, pretty strong messaging. (laughs) And call back to earlier when um, Continental Airlines said that they never experienced a a price drop in flights. Maybe that was like not, that was maybe that was before the movie came out. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so um so anyway since the 1980s is when friday the 13th really 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 became an unlucky uh-huh. day for us so uh-huh. it's only been around for like what 40 years is yeah that's not very long not that bad it makes so, sense that it's like if 1908 was when the new york times started propagating this then that's why all the buildings started like because all the old skyscrapers that are like 100 yeah. years old it makes sense that they would have yeah been part of that phase also if you could just go in and just change the plaque from 13 to 14 <gasps> okay fair point older yeah, buildings point. like you wouldn't even know so, so stupid I, i'm like oh well you can't ha- yeah it's just totally no true. no i yeah. still i i was on board with you i was like maybe it, they would have if they really wanted to or they're superstitious they could go like change a button or something but who knows <laughs> they could change so, the elevator yeah <laughs> so um i have uh five points left so Sorry, I know this is really long, but Friday the 13th. Five is my personality number, by the way. Okay, right. In case anyone's wondering. <laughs> uh, that would be five. So uh, so the solar, so the calendar that we use, where it's 30 days or 31 days, right? Uh, that is the Gregorian solar cycle. And one whole cycle is 400 years. Oh, wowza. Which is, it's exactly 20,000. 871 weeks. Jeez. Okay. And apparently if you use that system of those 400 years, it is a template and you can see the pattern for every Friday the 13th. Oh, cool. So you can always predict when one's going to show up. Right. So there, these are just fun facts that I'm throwing at you now. No more history, but I did want to mention this calendar. Fun fact. Number one, there is at least one Friday the 13th in every calendar year. Okay. And one happens, on average, every 212 days. Oh, I didn't know that. And, fun fact, uh, there can never be more than three Friday the 13th in one year. Wow. Three in uh, a year seems like a lot. It doesn't happen often, but it, ha- it does happen. Okay. Um, also, the shortest gap between two Friday the 13ths, if you look at a calendar, the shortest amount of time between one Friday the 13th and another is actually one month, but the long, but the longest gap can be up to 14 months. Wow. Which has only happened a handful of times. So there's like two exceptions. I think that caused that in a calendar, but every 14 month period, you can at least guarantee one Friday the 13th will be there. One month apart. That that must be a rough time for people who are really super bad 30 days. Yeah. So this also means, uh, that Friday the 13th, they happen um, on average, because it, it can happen at least once every calendar year. The average is it happens 1.7 times each year. So okay. I consider that one or two times. Yeah, um, <laughs> I would agree with that. But if you add all those up, then if every Friday, if there's 1.7 Friday the 13th every year, uh-huh. that means since the year one, there mm-hmm. have been 
3,477 Friday the 13th. Oh my gosh. Um, Wikipedia actually has a chart of all the Friday the 13th. <gasps> so uh, since the year 2000, there have been 39, which doesn't seem like a lot. No, it doesn't. The last one was this most recent month in August. Wait, really? Oh, yeah. My mom kept saying she was traveling to Germany that day. And I was like, I'm not superstitious, but maybe <laughs> but you're, your flight. But you're mentioning it a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. The next Friday the 13th will be in May, next May. So. May. Okay. So we don't have any left this year. Nope. How many May? were there in 2020? Because clearly. I think there was, was two. That I think one, there was two. The, the March one really set us off there. I remember start. TikTok saying something about like, oh, the last time there was a Friday the 13th, we all know what happened. And, uh -huh. like, and so I think it was like, there was definitely, I think there was two in 2020. Okay. Um, but yeah, the last one was this August. The next one will be next May. And uh, a lot of people specifically care about Friday the 13th in October because they're, it's spooky season, sure. right? Sure. Pre-Halloween. So I just wanted to say a fun fact about October Friday the 13th in the entire 20th century. There have been, there were 14 in <gasps> all of the 20th century. There were only 14 October, Friday the 13th. Wow. And in all of the 21st century, including like what we have not yet lived, all of the, the, yeah, all of the 21st century, there will also only be 14. Well, that's a bummer because I got married October 13th and I keep waiting for Friday the 13th to be my anniversary. There's only going to be 14 right, October, Friday the 13th in the entire days. 21st century. It's a women's day, celebration day. So far, there have only been three in this century. So there's going to be another 11 coming up. But the next one, Christine, is in 2023. Oh, hell yeah. Party time. So October, Friday the 13th, 2023, I think might be one of the only ones you get to see for a you know, while. And that's if, uh, if, my, if my baby reaches the due date and I end up getting induced, that would be right around, right around that time. Like no, it's can... 2023, homie. No, I know. But like the 13th would be the birthday. So maybe we can oh. aim for that and then. Oh, yeah. Okay. So hold you know. it in. Hold it in for <laughs> actually the forget it. It's not worth it. <laughs> get, get it out. <laughs> um, so uh, one last, and that's why we drink. Fun fact is mm. that people these are people with the with thirteen letters in their name. Oh, Charles Manson. Oh shit. Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh shit. Ted Bundy. <gasps> Theodore Bundy. Apparently, Albert DeSalvo. Who oh, I don't yeah. think we've covered. I have not. Jack the Ripper, <gasps> Adolphus Hitler. Fuck me, that's terrible. Um, but the last thing I will say is there is one celebrity out there who is very pro thirteen. Do you know who this is? Hmm. No. Taylor Swift. Oh. Fucking loves that thirteen. Yep. Yep. This is a quote from from Taylor Swift. I was born on the 13th. I turned 13 on Friday the 13th. My first album went golden 13 weeks. My first number one song had a 13 second intro. Every time I've won an award, I've been seated in either the 13th seat, Girl, 13th yes. row, or 13th section, or row M, which is the 13th letter. Basically, whenever a 13 comes up in my life, it's a good thing. Girl, yes, own it. And that's all of Friday the 13th. I love that. Ooh. And that was one of the funnest things I've ever heard you cover. That was the shortest amount of notes, and yet I feel like I talked for fucking ever. What happened there? Uh, anyway. Probably me happened, and I apologize. But wow, what a fucking roller coaster! I I tried my best. I did I did as much research as my brain could. I thought so. I had some fun <laughs> facts in my head, and I clearly I didn't know like ninety nine percent of that. So I learned a lot. Yay! Wow, Em, that was fun. I feel like I need to call my stepmom because she's one of those people who does not leave the house on Friday. Like she takes it very seriously. Oh, we'll um, see if she's, she's had any hospital of... visits anyway, because I will. And also around. she doesn't come to my house now because I have a black cat. <laughs> oh, hey, that's one way to keep superstitious people away. I Seriously, guess. growing up at my mom's house, we had black cats and she wouldn't drive up the driveway. She would make us walk up. <laughs> Which is wild because I uh, just personal preference, but black cats are my fucking I favorite. I love black cats. I mean, I literally set out to get one last Halloween because little moonshine entered my life sweet so sweet, sweet i had a black cat growing up so i just have a personal Aww. 
personal love for them. Eva has a black cat. I have a black cat. Ugh. I love black cats. Also, I to be fair, I haven't met Moonshine, so I can't say anything yet, but Eva's cat, Shadow, I have a really <gasps> warm spot I for. I love Shadow. Last time That's I saw sweetheart. Shadow, what did I eat? What did I bring to eat? Oh, I had a tiramisu. <laughs> oh. and I, and I did, a, did a little dunk of the finger, and I just booped him around right the little nose. And we had oh. some tiramisu together. I really Precious. love Shadow. Shadow, what a sweetheart. I had a black cat named Shadow growing up. That's the one my stepmom refused to drive past, so we got to oh, God. send us up the driveway. Like, walk all the way up. Whatever. All right. I, had a black cat named, I had a black cat named Rocky, but he was a... Uh, he acted a lot like a dog, which is why I think I vibed That's with him That's why so well. Mooney does that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. There you have it. We love black cats in Precious. this place. We do. Um, I love when I got a black cat and everyone sent pictures of their black cats, and I was like, oh, there's so many. Are um, aren't black cats, do they have the same issue as, uh, like, black labs, where, like, they don't get adopted very often? There, that I've heard that. I Googled that when I was adopting Mooney, and I've heard that, especially because it was Halloween time, and I heard that people kind of avoid black cats around that time, which makes me sad. That's sad. I know. I know. What's that about? People do that with black labs? I think so. I thought it was just black cats, but that... Maybe I, it's just black cats. I, I don't know. It feels... Like there's some underlying issues there. Sounds like I it's... always thought it was black cats because of the bad luck thing. But oh, know. I'm pretty sure black labs also get it because they like literally because they don't photograph well or something <gasps> like and, like Instagram <laughs> people. Well, because everyone called Mooney a void cat because like black cats they call void cats because they're hard to. But his eyes are so gigantic that like he just Aww. looks like a big gigantic weirdo. Let me see black labs. Uh. I don't know how you type this in. Adoption stigma? I don't know. Ooh, yep. Why Babies. black dogs are less likely to be adopted. What? Black dog syndrome. Are people racist against black pets? What's wrong with people? Puppy prejudice. Are black animals Puppy less likely to... Puppy prejudice. Stop. Listen, black lives matter. Black cats matter. Black, black labs puppies matter. matter. <laughs> black labs matter. <laughs> it oh, all matters. No. It all fucking matters. So I can't anyway. believe that. Ugh. Okay, anyway, well, and I'm I'm sure that also uh, attributes to like any other animal with black fur. So whatever, that's not good. Go adopt a black animal, please. Thank you very much. Only if you're prepared to take care of an animal. Don't just adopt one for funsies. Bingo. Hello, everybody. Uh, pee break is over, and I'm doing part two of Scott and Lacey Peterson. Right. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Where were we? I, last I don't. I thank time. God I marked it because I was like I would never have remembered where I was. I feel like it was all just a big blur. Um, yeah. So the last thing apparently that we talked about was that um, the police told Lacey's family. Do you remember the story? <laughs> I yes. Feel like yes. I don't yes, want to just like dump this on you <laughs> no, without no, no, no. a mind refresher. We're in the um, clear. We probably should have done this closer to the, the last one, but no, oh well, we didn't plan. I didn't plan for a part two, but um, so basically they had the photo of Amber Fry, who was the the quote unquote mistress, the mm -hmm. other woman in the in the case who came forward and the National Enquirer had a photo they were going to print. And so the police were like, shit, we got to tell Lacey's family before they find out mm. from the media. So they told Lacey's family and uh, Sharon, Lacey's mom, put her head in her hands and said, why did he have to kill yes. her? Yes. And so now everybody's turned on Scott. Um, Got it. So okay. all the volunteers. Wow, what a good way. What a, I know it was like a, an organic. Uh, impromptu. <laughs> an impromptu, like, ending the story there. But, like, what a cliffhanger. It was really, like, I, I hit that bullet and went. Wow. Well, I mean, I have like exactly halfway through the story. So God. Okay. Why well, not? I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. And there's still so much more to happen. So <clears throat> basically, uh, if you have not listened to the last episode, I would do that because it, there's a lot that went on there's, before there's now. There's a lot going on. <laughs> a lot happening here. There's a lot going on. Um, so now uh, this story became a more kind of scandalous, sexy story for the media. It was already pretty wild with like, girl next door disappears on christmas eve and she's pregnant and it was already a really scandalous story but now the husband who's been suspicious all along is like even more like he's now obviously the bad guy because he had an right. affair like whether he killed her or not he's very easy to paint as the he's like villain. definitely a prime suspect now yes. if he never was before yes and especially the media was able to like easily roast this guy 
Sure. Um, and so it was kind of sad. I was watching the documentary and this poor Amber woman, they got all these like photos of her, like leaked people leaked photos of her, like half nude and, you know, like her own private photos. People were leaking all over the media and like she did the right thing coming forward and saying, like, you know, she could have just stayed in the background and not said anything. But she, she really could have, especially, I mean, I know uh, if I were put in that situation, which like, oh my God, I hope never. But yeah. like, I would be, I would be afraid of like, yeah, I'm literally dating a potential murderer. Like the last thing I want to do is put my name in the ringer or like even for the press to like write oh, me in a, in a bad roast light. Roast you. Yeah. Yeah. I would be so, I'd be so nervous. And there were, so it was scared. terrible people. The articles were saying things like, she's uglier than <gasps> the white like he had such a beautiful wife like she's so like it was oh my god really bad and oh my god at least at least once she regretted that i bet being i like, bet it was wow, awful yeah because because even when she did the press conference like she talks about it now and she says like she was having a full-on legitimate panic attack on the uh. way up before the press even knew who she was <coughs> and in the actual press uh conference you can see like she's like shaking i mean she can barely like speak it's terrifying um oh my God. to be like one day just at home on christmas and then the next day you're like addressing the international news um mm. so anyway that's where we are scandalous story um now everybody's wondering well has scott this whole time been suspicious because he killed Lacey or has he been suspicious and shady because he was having an affair and was trying to hide his girl uh, so maybe he uh, maybe he really didn't kill her maybe he just had something else that he was right. freaking out about hiding okay. and my question is well maybe both I don't know just yeah. a thought you could be doing both uh, it's like but... that what's that Tostitos little girl <laughs> yeah. or not Tostitos Los Dos, like... yeah the, the tortillas right or what is something it? All yeah. I know is every time I'm stuck between two good options, I go, ¿Por qué no los dos? Oh. Excellent tante. <laughs> excellent tante. <laughs> One excellent tante it. idea. I God. just love that you live in LA of all places and your head goes excellent tante all day long. You know, I, I, it's gross. It really is gross. I love also, it. like, why on earth do I think I have the right to say, ¿Por qué no los dos? To myself every time I think ice cream or chocolate. And then I, like, can't even say the word excellent tante. Like, <laughs> so stupid. I love it. Okay. Um, so on January 25th, the day after Amber's press conference, Scott called Amber and her phone was being tapped, but he didn't know this. Right. Right. And he calls her. And so there's a recording of this and he says to her, I was really proud of you when you did that. You have an amazing character. I oh. pulled it. <laughs> I know. It's so icky, isn't it? It just, it's like, nobody needs you to be like, so slimy. Her. It's so yeah. slimy. He says, I pulled over and threw up when you cried. I was listening on the radio. And I he, like how he was like, I threw up when you cried. Probably because like uh, you are, were throwing up out of nerves that you just got yeah, fucking busted. Yeah, because you were like, shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd throw up too if my entire like persona had just been wrecked in a tr murder yeah, trial. Something you've been hiding this whole time. Yeah. And so he told Amber that because of her bravery, which... I don't know. Em and I have a pet peeve about people calling us brave when we're. I just, hate it. I like, hate it. When you're cornered into something and then you're called brave, it's like, well, yeah, whatever. It's just <laughs> when like you're a pet so peeve. brave for speaking out. It's like I, first of all, whether or not I feel obligated to do, like I, like it's not brave. It's just speaking. it can be a very condescending term. I think. In I think instances. I think we're both just used to like shitty shitty men telling us, <laughs> yeah. like, you're oh so wow, brave. like that's so brave of you, like. When I like, oh my god! I don't even think I told you this. Uh, when I went home recently, I told someone what my pronouns were, and they're like, "That's so brave of you to yeah, tell see, me." It. And I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I have to tell you, or else you will misgender me." Yeah. And then, wow. This guess is... what? They didn't misgender me, so Kel well, surprise. Course. But yeah, you know, it's like, oh well, my bravery. Like, I would want them to properly gender me, just so I can be like, "That's so brave of you to actually use pronouns." Right. Properly. Exactly. It's like you can't flip that on its head. Yeah. Ugh, uh, gross. I hate that. So he goes, because of your bravery, I'm going to speak to the press finally. So he says Amber inspired him out of her bravery for Ugh. him to go forward. Not because now, again, he's cornered uh, because she's now aired his quote unquote dirty laundry. Right, right. So, and by the way, like, I don't I hope that our like 
tangent, like we're not discrediting that she actually is brave as shit. No, 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 not at all. But it's just like his gross use of the word bravery. Yeah, it's like this isn't about you, guy. I mean, it is in a twisted way, but it's because you fucked up. Like the reason this is even happening is because you put her in this position. Yes. So to call her brave for coming forward, it's like you literally lied to her and told her you didn't have a wife. Mm Hmm. She's not. Just she's bef- in this position because of you. <laughs> just before anyone thinks that we actually like don't think she's like a no, rock no, no, star. no, 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 absolutely not. And like, there's definitely a nuance of the word brave. I'm saying, you know, it's obviously in the right context. It's totally different. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think in this context of Scott being like, you're so brave. It's like you literally created this whole fucking mess. <laughs> it's like, you know, this is your fault. This like- is your <laughs> fault. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Anyway, this just pisses me off. So. <laughs> Um, he says, I'm going to talk to the media now because of your bravery. And his lawyer is like, don't do that. Idiot. Right. Don't. <laughs> uh, his lawyer literally says, you're going to be eaten alive. But Scott says, no, I'm going on Good Morning America with Diane Sawyer. And I, oh, right. Okay. I'm mistake. sure. He, okay. Well, good luck. Good luck. Um, so brave of you. Uh, so late <laughs> January 2003, Scott did a Good Morning America interview with Diane Sawyer. Did not go well. Uh, no? Understatement of the century. Yep. Uh, surprise, surprise. Kel surprise, as <clears throat> Kel we say. Kel surprise. Uh, for starters, he outright lied to Diane Sawyer, and he told her that he had told police about his affair the day Lacey went missing, which is like... Oh, no. Mm, no, bud. So you're going to... I'm sorry. Like, you don't just go up to Diane Sawyer... <laughs> Prepared to defend yourself by lying when she has facts. By like, making up a fully, about? fully factual thing that Dart. And so, of course, he's like, yes, I, they knew already. Which now you look even more guilty because you're clearly bullshitting. So he mm. says, oh, yeah, yeah, the police knew from day one. And this was a flat out lie because when Al Burkini asked how their marriage was, he said it was absolutely fine. They had no issues whatsoever, he and Lacey. Then he told Diane Sawyer that Lacey also knew about his affair with Amber. And okay. when she was like, oh, so you told her? And he was like, yeah, we talked about it right before Christmas. And she said, well, how did it go? And he said, oh, she was fine with it. <laughs> she said, you do you, baby. Bullshit. Yeah, she's eight okay. months pregnant. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. You know, okay. well, what are you talking about? Also, if it was fine, like, you would have actually fucking mentioned it before. Like, yep, like, exactly. Just... If this was an open and you wouldn't have had to lie to your girlfriend that you didn't even have a wife to begin with. I mean, all of this is so shady. I have so... a hunch when he got called out. Uh, he then, like, thought later. is like, wow, Diane Sawyer's such a bitch. Like, and it was oh, like, absolutely. OK, I was right. trying to be brave. And then she ruined yeah. everything. She didn't even tell me I was being brave for doing this. So, like, she's like a double bitch. What like, bitch. you know. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, I'll tell you, Scott, you're being brave. Um, <laughs> does that make you feel better? <laughs> Maybe. So he tells Diane Sawyer, Lazy knew all about it. She was OK with it. And he, she was like, OK, so what happened when you told her? And he said, oh, there was no arguing at all. And it's like, that doesn't seem very likely. It's possible. It's not very likely. Especially the people who knew Lacey were like, oh, hell no. She wouldn't have been fine with that. Yeah. I feel like let's trust the testimony of others right now, Scott. Yeah. (laughs) Of like the average person, average eight month pregnant person in a monogamous relationship probably wouldn't be super chill on Mm. like the week before Christmas about this. So uh, then Diane Sawyer responds and she says, do you really expect us to believe that an eight month pregnant woman would be fine with this? Um, Right. And he's like, yep, that's all that happened. And apparently, most damningly of all, which got blasted all over the news, is that in the interview, Scott referred to his missing wife in the past tense, saying Lacey was amazing. And oh, that so like, and got, like she basically saying, confirming she's dead. In, in, in a lot of people's minds, it was like, why are you saying was? Do you know something we don't know? Uh-huh, um, right. And, you know, you can play that both ways of like, well, maybe he's just spe- coping that way. You know, who knows? But it, it didn't look good. I'll put it that way. And especially because when he said it, at least from what I gathered, the way he said it made it even sketchier because he said she was amazing, uh, is amazing. And it was like the way he corrected himself was like, oh, Ooh. that's just, not a cute look. That's what I thought. It was like it wasn't just like natural. It was like he said it and then like rewound himself. And it, it just seemed fishier that way. I think. Combine that with what we learned last week where he like – 
if she has just gone missing and he's fucking obsessed with these ribs and he's like, mm-hmm. go check out these barbecue. Like he's like, you see it is. <laughs> he is having the time of his life. He seems like he's doing like totally fine. And now he's using her name in the past tense. And he's also, like, Pasquale and I are at the Eiffel tower. And it's like, no, you're at your and wife's I was candlelight gonna say, vigil. I was going to say full blown fucking lying. And like, mm-hmm. even if, I mean, granted, I would not know because I haven't cheated, but like, I would imagine if I cheated and the yeah. person that I was married to and and was pregnant was dead and I was at a vigil, I don't think I could contain the lie anymore. And if my mistress called, I'd be like, look, really awkward, but I'm at my wife's fucking vigil right now. Like, I wouldn't even be able to keep it up, let alone, <laughs> let alone happily lie about, like... I think that's what uh, was... Like, yeah. I'm at the Eiffel Tower. What are you talking With about? With Pasquale, like a made-up fucking like, person. Clearly like throwing in... That shit crazy clearly adding detail where it is not needed exactly and 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 it was so startling to like Lacey's family who's over there putting every ounce of energy into trying to find Lacey, and then this guy's like pretending to be at the eiffel tower during the vigil refuses to speak it just all is such a whirlwind of bad and it's it's one of those things where like i don't know if he killed her i don't know i really don't none of us do but He's not a great guy. Like, he's a <laughs> shitty guy. Sorry. He, like, he, whether he did it or not, he's a shitty guy for all of the above that's happening right yeah, now. Yeah, in terms of your average boyfriend, he's not a winner. He's not know? a great husband, I gotta yeah. say. Like, I wouldn't be thrilled. Um, And so, you know, I mean, even the way he's treating the family and just, like, dissing them to, like, be with his, call his girlfriend during the vid, it's just all really shady behavior and whether he did it or not again it doesn't matter at this point because he's just a shitty guy sorry Mm. and and he's blatantly lying left and right without a thought like without without even and also blatantly lying like at a time where like if you're innocent oh my god you better be singing the truth like you're literally you got on diane sawyer and like you're gonna not tell the truth just lie what do you think's gonna happen that sounds like the the exact time to tell the truth and like exactly. you're just actively not doing it. So one hundred percent. And so it, it it made him look so guilty, and you can see why. Like I can see why. Um, again, whether the facts end up supporting that or not, aside, like he's making himself look really bad, mm-hmm. and that's on him. I'm just saying, in my humble opinion. So. <laughs> Maybe not so humble right now during my segment, but sometimes I, humble opinion. I am H.O. I am H.O. Okay. Okay. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. he says Lacey was amazing. I mean, is amazing. And it was like, ooh, mm-hmm. way to draw attention to that. So mm-hmm. not a great day for Scott. With the media already giving him a guilty verdict, he needed someone who was going to help really discover what happened to his wife. So he hires his own private investigator. Okay. Uh, so Gary Ermoyan is a private investigator who was going to do his own research into what happened to Lacey. And in Ermoyan's investigation, he spoke to the many neighbors who claim they saw Lacey walking the golden retriever on La Loma the day of her disappearance. And one even commented, she looked too pregnant to be out in the cold. So now he's interviewing all the people who said, no, we saw her walking the dog. Because mm. remember that got like dismissed by the police, but it was also right. like... But if that is true, then, like, that's a huge issue in the case against Scott. So, yeah. um, so he starts interviewing all the people who say they saw her. Uh, and he interviewed all of them and he pinned the location and timings of their sightings. And when he mapped a- out all these sightings, both Lacey's geography and type and the timings of the sightings hypothetically checked out completely with everybody's statements. So interviewing all these different people and mapping it out, it all fits okay like if it's true okay so diana campos who was smoking on a hospital balcony located on the side of the park where lacy was thought to have been saw someone matching lacy's description walking the golden retriever mackenzie and she remembers two men were following who she thought was lacy mm. and the dog barked at the men and she remembers the men yelling shut that fucking dog up at the <gasps> woman so this could be if it were if this all matches up, it could be the two two of the people who were robbing the house. If she had confronted them, do you mm, remember the people okay. who yeah. robbed the house across the street? Yeah, and, she, and, the, and all of her friends even said that she would have gotten in the way yes, or she exactly. would have done something. And if that is when that robbery occurred, maybe that's who was following her and saying like, "Shut up, your dog." 
Right. Uh, and if somebody was following her, then obviously that's another huge break in the case that points blame away from Scott. Um, so he collected all, the private investigator collected all this information, but he thought it was really strange um, that the police had never spoken to any of these witnesses. Uh Aha, yeah, that's interesting. It's not good. (laughs) It doesn't feel like protocol either. No. It's like, if if they existed, they would have been spoken to. You'd think so. And so uh, they interview a few of these witnesses who say, like, we reached out to the police and said, we saw her. Nobody ever contacted us. Nobody ever talked to us. So it's not a good look because it's sort of like the police had their eye on Scott and said nothing else matters. Uh And it's sort of like, you should have checked that out, in my opinion. Yeah. In my extremely humble opinion, I think you should have checked that out. (laughs) But that's just me. Um, So it's a little bit like fishy, you know, even if you're blaming Scott, you should have followed up on these people who said, I saw her walking down the street that day. Right. I'm a big proponent for like, even if we like think we know what's going on, like, dot your T's, cross your I's. (laughs) Completely. You know. Dot your I's. No, I like your version better. Okay. Sure. (laughs) You and I are the kind of people who cross our eyes and we don't get confused. But <laughs> I that's certainly, okay. yeah, okay. You know what? You're right. Okay. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I mean, excellent Tante. Excellent Tante. Um, so the PI gets all this information and it all maps out properly. And he's like, "That's really weird that no, but no police ever talked to these people." Yes, I agree. It's very weird. Um, which is ex- this part's extra sad. Her due date comes and goes. She's still not found. And that Ugh. always is heartbreaking when like pregnant people are missing and it's like the due date comes it's and like, it's like, you know, the baby is what, wherever or yeah. whatever is going on. The baby is or yeah. was supposed to be here. Yes. When the due date passes and you're like, you know, you don't hear anything. It's like that just there's just an extra level of like tragedy to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so due date comes and goes, which is early February. She has not been found. Um, in terms of the media storm, the case goes quiet again for a couple weeks until April 14th. So on April 13th, this is where we get another big uh, break in the case. Locals along the San Francisco Bay had found two mutilated, decomposed bodies washed ashore. Ooh. One was what seemed to be an adult woman's torso with no <gasps> head or no limbs. Oh, my God. Uh, and another was an infant. Oh, God. Okay. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I like, ugh, I know. So Scott's whereabouts were not known when the bodies were discovered. He'd actually been, like, MIA for weeks. Um, He'd been in San Diego with his family to avoid, like, the news trucks capturing his every moment. And on April 18th, um, so this is a few days after the bodies were found, Scott was driving down the highway, and he called his brother to say he was being followed by the media. So he starts driving erratically. He's trying to get rid of them. What he didn't know is that he was actually being followed by police. (laughs) And so he's like, these bozos are following me. No, they're unmarked cop cars. So Uh uh he gets followed by police all the way to the golf course where he's going golfing. And they pull into the parking lot and they find him. Fun fact, Scott has completely changed his appearance. Okay, that's uh, worth noting. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, very worth noting. He was carrying over $10,000 in cash, camping gear, his brother's ID card, and four cell phones. Okay, well, like, that is absolutely fishy. Okay. Yeah, and (laughs) the thing is, if you hear his family talk about it, they're like, no, no, like, everything can be explained. And it's like, oh, technically, I guess, like... The skeptics who are like, no, he's not guilty, point out that, like, I'm sorry, the skeptics who say, okay, so Scott's family, or proponents of Scott, I should say, say, like, oh, don't worry, like, there's an explanation for everything. He has his brother's ID because he wanted a discount at the golf course, and the $10,000, they said, was because um, a family member accidentally got out cash instead of okay you know, yeah like you something. can't even you can't even finish the sentence like yeah it just <laughs> I was like, sound wait, okay it, it seems like a lot and like sh- he changes appearance to avoid the media and it's like i guess all of those things individually make some sense but like it's together is a one lot. crazy day like yeah what? What are you- <laughs> whoops alexander's no good very bad day or whatever that fucking book was when we were little <laughs> scott's very 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 bad day um 
<laughs> Yikes. Because like, why are you have four cell phones? And they were like, well, he had one from this and one from, and it's like, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, they accidentally had $10,000 in cash. He just happened to have camping gear. He just happened to want to go golf. It's just all very bad look mm-hmm. once again. Um, and people who were like, yeah, he fucking did it are quick to point out that San Diego is very close to the Mexican border and potentially he was driving down there with a new appearance to kind of get away from uh-huh. everything. Mm-hmm. So it's like two two sides here that are arguing. Yep. Um, I find it to be fishy as fuck, but you know, that's hey, just me. I'm with you, Christine. You know what? In I'm our extremely you. non-humble opinions, it's fishy <laughs> as fuck. Okay, everybody? <sighs> oh boy. Um, so people think he was planning to run. So while he was being arrested and heading back to mid, because again, they just found the bodies a few days ago too. Mm. And part of me is like, you're going golfing. They just found your dead son in the water, whatever. I mean, and then again, that's I mean, I, yeah, none of my I know it, I know it's, I, we talked about it last time of like people, people grieve differently. I just, it feels, it feels odd. It, it just, I, if the person that I was married to, and my baby, whether or not I even love the person anymore, but my baby yeah. were found dead in a river, dismembered. I could not just go to the golf course. I can't imagine dyeing my hair and going golfing and being like, oh, come on. It's just a normal day in my yeah. life. I don't know. It feels weird. Feels it does. Odd. I agree. I agree. And again, this is all circumstantial, but, you know, that's what we have to go on. So... While Scott was being arrested and heading back to Modesto, DNA tests confirmed that the bodies were, in fact, those of Lacey and baby Connor. And according to Doug Maynard, who was in the car with Scott when they told him about the bodies, uh, he didn't really react. And he claims that it was because he was with the police and he didn't want to cry or show emotion in front of the police. But, like, learning your family has been found murdered is a hard like you're thing. allowed to cry like yeah no one's gonna be like <laughs> like we're not we're not calling you a baby right now. yeah like, it, it seemed like a weird excuse like well i didn't want to show emotion in front of them and it's like well it's like well it's weird that you're not showing emotion it's also my weird that you're, like right, exactly it's and really I, weird that you're telling the cops to come over and look at your barbecue plate or play golf but like yeah. you won't cry yeah yep 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 and it's it's just doesn't feel good to me. I don't know. And I get the catch 22 of like, oh, you cry, you're faking it. You don't cry. You're not emotional enough. Like I get right. that catch 22. I do. But to be like, no, I didn't want to show them emotion intentionally. So I pretended like I didn't care or whatever. It's just a weird angle to me. I don't know. Yeah. So what, when the car arrived at the jail, a mob, not surprisingly, was waiting for Scott. <clears throat> and they all had signs that read murderer and things like that. Um, oh, yeah, people were pissed. Hmm. Uh, locals were who had originally been there to help him and find Lacey and, you know, all these volunteers had now officially turned on him. First, there was the affair and now there's the bodies. Sure. So meanwhile, uh, the Peterson house itself was being surrounded by flowers from well-wishers. And Scott was arraigned on April 21st, 2003. He was charged with two counts of premeditated murder and he pleaded not guilty. Oh, well, I'm kind of not surprised. Well, yeah, good point. Not a shocker. So so May 2nd, 2003, the Peterson family hired celebrity lawyer Mark Garagos, uh, and he is like a name that you hear all throughout these, any of these documentaries, Mark Garagos as their attorney. Um, And it it, uh, cost them a million dollars flat. Whoa. And the reason that Scott's family hired Mark Garagos is because he was a celebrity lawyer who had been on Larry King every night defending Scott. Oh, so, like on his own without them even having yes, paid him yet. Correct. Okay. So Nancy Grace okay. was on Larry King going like this asshole deserves to burn basically. And Mark Garagos was saying, well, let's think about devil's advocate sort of. Uh-huh. So, uh, Scott's dad saw this and said, like, I want to hire that guy to be his lawyer because he already is defending him on air. And right. We don't have to convince him of anything. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be. He has the passion that we, we really Correct. need. Correct. He's already on the right, quote unquote, right side. Exactly. So they hire him for a million bucks. Um, and he 
is pretty famous. He's already really good at weathering like a media shit show. Um, he has worked with Winona Ryder, Robert Downey Jr., and Chris oh, Brown. Wow. Like wow. the Chris Brown lawyer. I mean, I guess yeah. good guy to get on your side if you're looking guilty. Uh, <laughs> in the media is what I have to say. <laughs> uh huh. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he is now the lawyer, and his whole mission is to argue against the prosecution's theory that Scott had killed Lacey the night of December 23rd and then the following morning attached eight pound weights to each of her limbs and dumped her body into the San Francisco Bay. This is the prosecution's plan of action theory and he has to fight this. So uh, private detective Ermoyan, the PI who had interviewed all those neighbors thought Garagos would have more than a good enough chance to defend Scott because People at the marina had seen Scott that day and nobody reported seeing him with a body or a big object or anything like that. Okay. And they were like, you know what? This might not be as hard as we think because it would have been nearly impossible for him to hide a big object in his boat without anybody seeing because he had been spotted by so many people and witnesses at the dock. So now they're thinking, great, we have this celebrity lawyer, we have this PI, we've gathered all this information, we have witnesses who've seen him and who saw Lacey walking the dog, and they think, like, you know what, maybe we have a chance here after all. So, two days later, on May 4th, which was Lacey's birthday, oh, so she and I have the same birth number. Oh, fun. Is that what it's called? Yeah, birthday number, I think. Birthday number? Um, So, a... Uh, On her birthday, they held a memorial service for her and Connor. Uh, The whole community came together to remember her. And the Petersons did not attend out of respect for Lacey's family, which I I do understand because it probably would have been a circus if they had shown up. Um, And they instead had their own 20-minute memorial in jail with Scott. Wow. Okay. On November 18th of 2003, Scott was ordered to stand trial. And according to biography.com, following 11 days of testimony from investigators, family members, and neighbors in a preliminary hearing, the judge determined that prosecutors had shown probable cause and that Scott would have to stand trial for the double homicide charges. So they presented a strong enough case that the judge said, like, yep, this guy's got to prove that he didn't murder his wife and child. So. Okay. Uh, interestingly, 50% of the potential jury members admitted in a questionnaire that they thought Scott was guilty before even joining the jury. And that was a big problem because you can't really be impartial. Because you can't be jury. biased. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If you already think that he did it. Um, and so Scott Peterson's trial officially began on June 1st, 2004. And uh, by this point, this case was so massive. Everyone knew who he was. And... Uh, Although there were seats in the courtroom for the press, they did not allow cameras inside. Um, But every reporter was standing outside. They had, like, full, you know, they had reporters inside. Like, Nancy Grace was inside, and she would, like, report back on, like, what was happening so that people had, like, a blow-by-blow of what was going on. Did we ever Um, hear, I know this is kind of far back, but you're bringing up Nancy Grace, so I'm thinking of Diane Sawyer again. But did we ever, did she ever come back into the picture, or was that just a one-time thing? Um, it was just that one interview that like really blew his plan. (laughs) Like he, okay. So it wasn't like she was as involved as Nancy Grace got. I think Nancy Grace was more thoroughly like long-term involved from day one. Yeah. Um, so the Diane Sawyer thing was like a big monumental moment, but I don't think it was, um, like a longer lasting thing than that. Gotcha. Um, so in his opening statements, the prosecution, uh, Rick DeStasso, Rick DeStasso, uh, presented the theory that Scott had murdered Lacey the night of the 23rd and then put her weights on her body and dumped her out of his boat the next day. Jeez. So the crux of the prosecution's case was that Scott Peterson did not want to be a father and wanted the freedom to date other people, aka Amber Fry, and that instead of divorce, he chose murder. So that was their motive that they were presenting against scott sure and on june 2nd uh we heard the defense's opening statements and this is where shit gets a little wild so oh it hasn't gotten wild yet Christine? no <laughs> not quite okay what is about to happen then <laughs> so mark garagos uh the the celebrity lawyer you know chris brown and winona Ryder, etc 
He shows up and he says, you're not going to like my guy, a.k.a. Scott Peterson, but you're going to see he's not a murderer. So his angle is, yeah, he's a shithead. <laughs> he is garbage, but like he's innocent garbage. But he's like not a murderer garbage, right? It's like so everyone can his... relax. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. So that's his angle, which, you know, is probably the best way to go at this point because nobody fucking likes him. Right. So it's like, yeah, I guess that's the angle you have to take. And now, do you remember when I said that when they woke up on Christmas Eve, they were watching Lacey's favorite program? Oh, yes. I, Christine, the meringue. <laughs> Big Martha. Big Martha and her meringue. Yep, yep. Okay, so the meringue, it's back because the prosecution had said this is a lie, like blah, blah, blah. During Mark Garagos opening statement, he literally plays the episode that aired that morning in which Martha Stewart is making meringue. And okay. this is bad because the prosecution has already said he was lying. He made up a story about Martha Stewart and meringue. There was no meringue. They didn't watch the tape. Like they had access to what episode aired that day. And I guess the, the police officer who went back and checked kind of skimmed the episode and didn't catch that they talked about meringue and he said oh he fully made it up so the, was, the r&d was not well done the r&d was uh -huh. fell through the cracks uh -huh. and so he was like no no there was no talk of meringue on that episode and then mark ergos is like oh really let's watch it and they played like her talking about meringue and they were like well so that's not a good look because the prosecution said oh he made that up we checked uh -oh. No, nope. he was telling the truth. Uh, he watched some sort of Martha Stewart that day about meringue. So it's not a good look because shit. It's just could not we have also though if I, I would have looked at every TV guide that day and been like maybe there was a quick summary and he knew to just check the TV guide of what was playing that day so it looked like he was home. It's possible. It's possible. Because it like Martha has fun with meringue. You know, like could have like. <laughs> remember we tv guides check. we should check what the tv guide literally said i'm curious december because that could he could have used that and we could be reopening the case with our new info so i gotta say too that apparently the day before they were also talking about meringue on an episode i guess they talk about meringue oh. a lot so my other thought is maybe it was the day before and he got lucky that and they, they just about lucked it two out days in a row. yeah but i don't know that Jeez. I, it's pretty spot on that he says, oh, yeah, we watched it that morning. They talked about Meringue and they literally did. Um, so, yeah. And the fact that he was interviewed about that, like, right after she was reported missing, like, he would have had to do a lot of preparation right. to, like, go gotcha. to the TV guide and plan this. So it's possible. You're right. It's possible. Um, like, if I were going to murder someone back when the TV guide was hip and happening, I would have at least checked, you know, mm -hmm. just, like, had an alibi. Check on what Martha's making that day. What What's Martha up to? Martha, what do I do with meringue? I still don't know. I still, yeah, That the real question in court should have been like, what did you learn about meringue that day? Yeah, what? what? <laughs> and he would have been like, I learned that it's boring. And I, I didn't learned that I, I don't so don't care, but apparently it's very important to this case right, all right. of a sudden. Oh, how terrible though to like... <laughs> whatever i don't know this is just getting existential in my head of like you're just watching martha stewart make meringue and then all of a sudden it's brought up like years later in your court case yep. anyway okay so he says so the prosecution is like no he fully made that up and then mark Ergos is like interesting because like they did talk about meringue dun 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 so <laughs> bad look police who did not do their research yeah and also a blow to their credibility right like Oh, for sure. Oh, we checked. He made it up. And it's like, you didn't check very clearly. It definitely makes the whole case like it should get thrown out the window of like, if you didn't check this, like, how do we know you, you checked You got anything? it. Right. Then it's like, well, what? Right. What else did you not pr properly R&D? Um, yeah. So not a good look. And uh, Garagos also lifted a huge file of evidence that had been cleared by the police. Um, his point was to show the jury that nothing had been found at the alleged crime scene. So there was there were a lot of rumors. Um that like when police arrived at his house they could smell bleach and he had just like cleaned the floors it was all made none of that was in any of the police reports Ooh. so even though the media was going on like yes apparently he had just it was all rumors there was no evidence whatsoever that they had found at his actual house on the 24th so the defense then pre presented the information that on the morning of the 24th now this is another big blow to the prosecution 
Shit, what is going on over there? I know. A computer analyst reported that someone had been on the Peterson home computer on the morning of December 24th looking at women's clothing as well as umbrella stands that had sunflower patterns on them. And Lacey was a huge, like, she loved sunflowers. She had a sunflower tattoo. She was, like, all about sunflowers. And so they proved that on the morning of the 24th, someone was on the computer at home looking up, like, sunflower accessories for the house uh Uh and women's although we could we could pretend he was pretending to be her right that's what i thought and then they made the really good point of if he had done that wouldn't he have pointed them to the computer and said like look she was like this is probably a lot to explain but if if he had been the one who planted that like searching for women's clothing and searching to pretend it was her wouldn't he have pointed them that way wouldn't they have, wouldn't he have pointed the investigators that way to say, i guess so but like yeah. nobody he didn't know so like he like, couldn't have if thought he were, to, if he were doing that with the thought with that intent. like they would check the computers when he have said like oh haven't you checked the computer check the computer or, or like yes yeah, she was on the computer you can check you know or right like oh i saw her on the internet but like he didn't apparently know and so he didn't even know to be like check her web history um Mm. and so this wasn't even brought up for years you know until this actual case until the prosecution hired this computer analyst to check so i was like that's a fair point i feel like if he had planted that he would have at least told somebody to check it you know what i mean yeah yeah no that makes total sense so uh, i don't know i'm stuck on that one but part of me thinks what if what if he was i really thought this was gonna be like I really thought this was going to be like such like a clean cut. Oh, you know, like, it's so frustrating. I was so ready to just. I mean, I mean, I still have my opinion that I I don't think my I don't think my first gut is gut instinct is wrong, right. but it, he is making it messier. It's to, definitely not as clean cut as I guess we were led to believe. Um, yeah. and the documentaries are very nuanced i would say so some of them are very much like well he obviously fucking did it the end and then the one i this one that i watched the six part one is more like well let's look into all the things that the police did wrong and things that could have you know and so i'm like that threw a wrench into my plan my plans (laughs) my plans (laughs) so it's a little bit confusing um so she loves sunflowers. They're like, well, somebody on the 24th was looking up sunflowers and he was at the marina. So who was mm. it? I don't know. Um, let's see. The prosecution also claimed that, you know, this was a part of the cover up and he had done this on purpose to cover up her murder. But then uh, why would he have not said anything? Why wouldn't he have pointed right. them to the computer? Um, and so Gergos asked how Scott could have... Uh, thought how people could think he had murdered her bring her body into the car in broad daylight check into the marina which he had a receipt for and have enough time to clean up the crime scene and dump the body with no one seeing sure fair it's possible but it's tough okay um and everything that the prosecution basically brought up the defense was like bang bang boom we have a counter to that got it got it got it so the defense was like kicking ass in other words uh and it's not a good look again for the millionth time and in a huge turning point this is when the prosecution takes back the power here when oh amanda fry oh. takes the stand Ah, uh-huh. okay got it so according to cbs on august 10th 2004 in what many considered a major turning point for the trial amber fry took the stand for the first time to tell the jury about her relationship with scott peterson a secretly married man and about all the lies he told her she painted a picture of a dishonest man who could tell falsehoods with ease hurting his credibility jurors so she's basically like a um character witness to say like right he's a shithead uh, I mean, she's doing it flawlessly. She's though. doing a great job. <laughs> she's so brave. Uh, jurors she's heard so brave. <laughs> <laughs> jurors heard the lies for themselves in the recorded phone calls that they had. Um, so that really, really, really hurt his credibility. And with all of these fucking lies about Europe, you can they literally just got to hear him say, oh, I'm now in, I'm in Spain. Now I'm in France. And it's like. There's photos. Now I'm in your underpants. I'm yeah. <laughs> There's photos of him at the vigil, and the <clears throat> the jury's hearing him blab on about the Eiffel Tower. So like, it's just that they got a 
a good serving of like Scott's a shithead. Um, and he was exposed to be like the cheater that he was. And in so many people's minds, this uh, man was guilty. And remember, he told Amber, I lost my wife and this will be my first Christmas without her. And then right. fucking two weeks later, she vanishes. It's just a yeah. weird coincidence. I'm sorry. You know, it's it's a lot of weird coincidences that have no explanation. And then throw in, like, the $10,000 and his appearance changing. Mm-hmm. And, like, and then also, like, he's on Diane Sawyer and he's just fucking lying. He's, like, the like, unluckiest man in the world, if if this is all a, true. He's the walking number 13. Yeah, he is, he is the baker's dozen nobody invited to the party. <laughs> <laughs> he is the baker's dozen that nobody wanted at the pastry shop. That's, That's right. How you got to finish that one. And it's hard to believe that you would not want that thirteenth donut. But what if I told you? It but this fell one has jelly in on it, the floor, you know, and it yeah, was filled okay. with jelly. <laughs> <laughs> That's, does that mean we'd be the worst fucking lawyers? But what if, if we I were told character you? witnesses? We'd be like, he was a bad donut. Like, like he <laughs> had dirt on him and i know what you're thinking there's no such thing as a bad donut but you would be wrong but this one was a day old so you tell me it was pretty old and it hit the floor sorry Mm -hmm. that's the case i don't make the rules i just couldn't do the truth um (laughs) your honor (laughs) it was soggy it was like sitting for too long and it melted yeah it got a little like stale not good so yeah on that note uh despite how well the defense had like defended him up until this point after 19 weeks where we heard from 174 witnesses by the way scott didn't take the stand which they think hurt him because oh okay even though he took the stand in diane sawyer's world like and it didn't go well if he had taken the stand in court at least his lawyer could have led him into better Be- right. answers or made he could have he could have better. said something that would have made him look better. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, like he it. was being painted by all these people as like the <clears throat> shitty cheater. Maybe he could have gone up and said like uh, defended himself in some way, but he didn't go up at all. Um, and after seven days of deliberation, which also in the uh, documentary you can see they had to replace two jurors for like not behaving properly. Like one of them oh, started wow. talking to Lacey's family before the trial, Ooh. and another one was like gossiping outside. It, it, like. There's just a lot of drama with the jury to begin with. So they had to replace two jurors. So after seven days of jury deliberation, Scott Peterson was convicted of the first degree murder of Lacey Peterson and the second degree murder of Connor Peterson, his son. Wow. On November 12, 2004. So he was found guilty of both. And this was surprising to some people because it was sort of like circumstantial. It's all circumstantial, but like there's no actual proof that he murdered her. I mean, maybe right. there is, but it's all kind of. I don't There's know. a lot of evidence pointing towards yes. it, but no final not, anything. Not necessarily anything like super concrete, but they vote. They the jury came back said he is guilty uh, of both murders, and the jury then recommended that Scott be sentenced to death. And Ooh, one wow. of the jurors said that was his regret that like he still felt like Scott was guilty, but he did regret saying voting for for death penalty and he said if he did it again he would vote uh for life in prison so in march 2005 the judge agreed and although he still maintains his innocence um scott currently resides in san quentin state prison according to the modesto b two appeals were filed one in 2012 and one in 2015 and he's also asked for a new trial, but the California Attorney General rebuked the request in a 150-page document and said there is overwhelming evidence for Scott Peterson's guilt, so he is not getting a new trial. Uh, one of Scott's defense attorneys, Pat Harris, claimed that the outcome was outrageous because the prosecution couldn't tell you when the murder happened, they couldn't tell you where it happened, they couldn't tell you how it happened, the only thing they could do was just say Scott Peterson's a bad person. So, as ABC News reported on August 24th, 2020, so, like, almost about a year ago exactly, uh, almost two decades after his conviction, the California Supreme Court upheld Peterson's guilty verdict but overturned the death penalty sentence and determined that um, because of the way they had to, like, dismiss these jurors and all this business um, and because the, the... juror questionnaire did not ask their views about the death penalty before they joined that the death penalty was out of the question basically off the table so they scrapped the death penalty said life in prison 
and kept it at that. So, almost two decades after the disappearance and murder of his wife, Lacey Peterson, and their unborn child, Connor Scott Peterson says he's still seeking justice and that his first trial was unfair. Uh, to this day, in the, the documentary, you can see Scott Peterson's sister-in-law, Janie, uh, maintain what she calls her war room of evidence where she's still trying to like exonerate him and she has people wow. fly in that she's met online who like help build like they're trying to build a case to like get him out like, of do prison they have, like, one of those big walls they with, like, literally the have the wall with all oh, these shit. pins about like where Lacey was spotted by witnesses and you know all this so th- so they're trying to exonerate him and listen I say give it a shot if if you can great wow you know i don't know at this point i don't know i don't know i I know he's a shitty husband and not a great guy but i don't know i don't know if he killed her i don't know um yeah that's at the very least uh, that we can say that he was not like 10 out of 10 on values yes i I would say i don't love the guy i gotta say yeah uh i don't love him (laughs) not a huge fan but there's a lot of i would say there's enough doubt at least in my mind which is all you need to, to, you know, like you just need one teeny little iota of doubt and that should be enough legally, you know, to not send you to the death penalty. But oh yeah, who knows? Yeah. I mean, the, I'm so thrown because I always was like, oh, he fucking did it, obviously. But then I'm like, well, they really got to interview these people who said they saw her. And if the burglary literally happened that day, like that's really fishy. And Or like the cops not looking at the video of the Yeah, thing it's kind of like, ooh, you're not making this easy for us. To... It's like, I do understand yeah. why he would want a fair trial. Yeah, like that's, yeah, I yeah. Get that. And why his family would be like, yo, you're missing all these pieces. So yeah. I get it. And like the, you know, he's a shithead. So I like... It's hard. I don't know. It's a very, it's really confusing for my brain, I guess. Um, But, oh, the other thing, too, is, like, when, this was really sad, but they talk about, like, when they found Connor's body and, like, how they believe that happened with, like, because, you know, it was her torso that was found. And Mm -hmm. they had, like, experts come in and, like, doctors say, like, whether Connor would have been born before he was found or whether he would have whether he like was still in her body when she was dumped i mean it's all just like so dark and horrible and even like like none of that can be really proven like his gestational age has been like uh, debated like whether he was you know eight months or whether he was older and it's just like oh it's just so fucking sad um and so and even where the bodies were found like now his sister-in-law is saying well he couldn't have dumped her where they say he did because the body wouldn't have washed that way. There's just a lot of stuff that gets discussed in this six part series. That if you're, if you want wow. more info, I would recommend watching it. Um, so, so is that what you were saying? The the documentary was like a little quote controversial because yes. it was more biased. It was, but like yeah. also it sounds like it was trying to do a fair trial that never actually happened. That's kind of where my brain goes is like, yeah, I get why people call it biased, but also like it's important to know these things that like they didn't check this out and they didn't interview these people. Like I'm, yeah. I, I'm glad I know this now, you know? So I, yeah, that's exactly where my brain was. Um, gotcha. So Janie, his sister-in-law has this war room of evidence, um, from an interview with uh, Jonathan Vig- Vigliotti, she claims she can prove Scott's innocence. She claims witnesses saw Lacey walking in the neighborhood near the Peterson home after the time Scott said he left for his fishing trip. And if mm. that's true, Scott could not have killed Lacey. Scott Peterson's attorney explains there's been a lot of criticism because we didn't call some witnesses who saw Lacey that day. That's the other thing. The prosecution also got in tr- or not the prosecution, the defense also got in trouble because they kept saying, oh, we have all these people who saw Lacey that day, but they didn't call any of them to the stand. So oh, it's sort really? of like, yeah. So it's sort of like if you had all these people who could have said, like, I saw her, like, why didn't you call them? But why wasn't, why weren't they, why didn't they get to share what happened? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so his argument <sighs> is that a number of the witnesses who saw her didn't have great memories or were contradicting each other. And so they, they were scared if they brought that to the table that prosecution would like destroy that and say like you know now you have nothing i I don't know so it's Hmm. i think people were disappointed they didn't get that that angle of it because that could have been a really big deal if they had witnesses who saw her oh yeah a thousand percent so retired detective john bueller says there are no witnesses who saw Lacey alive that morning 
He says there were other young women in the neighborhood who were pregnant and looked similar to Lacey, and it could have been easy for them to mistake her, mistake one of them for being Lacey. Um, so that's one of the arguments. And it's it's just tough. I don't know. So I say watch the documentary series, kind of read up on your own and, you know, let me know what you think. I'm very curious because I feel like I always had it in my head like, oh, he for sure fucking did it. And I think there's enough reasonable doubt to get in my head, if that makes sure. sense. Sure. No, that makes total sense. Um, where I wouldn't be sure what to vote for if I were a juror. I'd be a little bit hesitant at the very least. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's that. Um, this is a long episode. I apologize, everybody. But that is part two of and the final part of my Lacey and Scott Peterson coverage. Wow. Good job. Wow, thank you so much. This was a wild ride of an episode today. What day does this come out? Oh my gosh, a while from now, I think, like four weeks from now or something. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think where, where I would be in four weeks, but I why would I even do that to myself? I don't know the answer. It'll be, I think, October or at least the end of September. I think it'll be at least in October. Hmm. It'll be a few That means I'm, I'm in the thick of it right now trying to figure out Allison's birthday. Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. I don't know what I'll be doing, but I'm sure it will be maniacal. Maniacal um, indeed. It'll be excellent, Dante. So, uh, oh, do you have Eva any says fun October facts? third. Yeah, so October third is when this comes <gasps> oh out. Oh my god! Wow. I, is it? It's not a Wednesday though, because no, it's it'd be the, Sunday. I know. Well, I was thinking it's October third. October third. Oh, we should wear. We should have worn pink today, since Aww. it'll come out on uh, on October third. Oh well, precious. Um, okay, well, I have a little... Thank you, Eva, by the way, for <laughs> texting us that. Did she also write circumstantial in the chat? Because she's going to kill me if she did and I didn't see it. No, she didn't. Okay. Um, so do you want to know at that point, if I'm still pregnant, yikes, how big the baby will be? Yes. Um, okay. Week 40 would be Rocky's boxing gloves. Oh. Or... I like how by week 40, it's not just like... It's the size of a baby. Like, it's <laughs> a baby size. One of my apps is like, it's the size of a la- a baby lamb. And I'm like, what? So also a baby so human, just a probably. baby like- human, right. <laughs> and then, uh, according to 80s and 90s nostalgia, a Build-A-Bear. Fun. I like that. And I'm just so nervous I won't mention it next week and I'll forget. But just heads up, next week when we record the next episode, uh, it'll be Kermit the Frog. So... And that's how it. far we are into this nightmare. <laughs> uh, into this. Oh, I like. Wait, hang on. Kermit the Frog is supposed to be smaller than a build a bear. No bigger. Forty one will be oh, next bigger. week. Sorry. Uh-huh. I mean next week. Like the week how after many October weeks does 3rd. it show you? Because like forty two. Think... Oh, so forty two the... is like usually when you're induced if like you haven't given birth yet. So Kermit the Frog is the penultimate size uh-huh. of your baby. Correct. 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 What's the final so... one? A baby so the final one is a cabbage patch kids doll Jeez. Um, and then according to movie and tv props so the week of uh the the week of kermit is michael jordan's basketball in space jam oh (laughs) which i guess is just a basketball i would imagine sounds what that sounds like yeah same like the volleyball from castaway like just a volleyball (laughs) i guess the spaghetti from leading the tramp is spaghetti okay well interestingly uh week 42 Mm. would be pizza from teenage mutant ninja turtles so like a 22 inch pie which girl (laughs) feels pretty damn big so Ooh, wow okay fun i got a lot happening yeah, over here it's a lot of sizes growing it can make your body stop it that's Ow, not cool i'm trying <laughs> oh well um that means we've only got like two weeks left of you telling me sizes of your baby I know, and then and eventually i'll be like it. and then later i'll be like christine what's the size of your baby and you can just like lion king hold the baby up and be like it's this size it's today. bigger than moonshine already <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, well, uh, very exciting stuff. And uh, yeah, that I am excited to... It's Tuesday, so I'm going to go do Tea Time Tuesdays. Have fun. I'm going to watch Tea Time. I love Tea Time Tuesday. Shout out, by the way, to Tea Time Tuesday. If you are not a member of Patreon, you should. And then every Tuesday, uh, I dish some hot gossip. Uh, yes. Well, I dish what... Everyone that is a Patreon anonymous member sends me gossip. Yeah, anonymous so dirt on your bosses and your ex-husbands. And it always and comes with a blurry selfie of M's reaction. Sometimes I can't handle the, I can't take the heat. I got to get out of the kitchen. great so. stuff. I watch it every Tuesday. It's a fun time. Join it's a good me. good time. And? That's 
why we drink. <laughs>